not a good person Ask anyone who knows me I'm mean and bitter and a failure At everything that I say I believe I'm not a good person Ask anyone who loves me I never write, I never call I never think about anyone at all will consume me and I'm too tired for the truth I'm not a good person I'm sure you're not surprised It must be pouring out my sweat glands It must be someplace in my eyes I don't know why I am this way I've been like this Try to keep up with everything I know I should do, but then I'll fall to pieces anyway. I don't know why I am this way. I'm not a good person, not even to you. I'm staying home cause I can't stand the sound of another heartbeat in the room I'm not a good person Fuck it, you know it's true I'm lazy, I'm a coward I'm asleep all day in my room I don't know why I am this way I've been like this since I can remember I try to keep up with everything I know I should do But then I'll fall to pieces anyway I don't know why I am this way Like we had some 
you got is real, but against us, pray for what you don't want. Reverse theology. I'll pray for freedom, cause no matter how much I'll tell you I want it, I'm still getting led around by a cigarette. Or anger, or fear, take your pick, I don't give a shit. And I wish it were true, but to get free we have to start with what's true, I think. And if I have to tell you that what's real is terrible, maybe you're in the wrong place. If I have to tell you that what's true is terrible, maybe you're in the wrong place. I've looked my family in the eye and told them leave me to die Or I'll make you sorry you didn't I've stolen from people who didn't deserve it I've not helped people who did I turned away when I knew I made a mistake Instead of dealing with it I've wasted good chances I've had in this life that other people won't even get I put off setting things right with Andy and now he's dead
in the fact that every empire's days are numbered, man. But I don't think that I can count that high. I should have paid better attention in school or something. Cause I feel like there's something that I don't know. And if I could just jam it into my skull, I can stand to live somehow. But I don't know. And the fact is, I'm 2.7 decades in to a growing ambivalence. I can count on no hands how many fucks I've given. Or is it a million? Are God and void equivalents? Are we making total destroyer just making a living? And I know that Rome wasn't burnt in a day. But it couldn't have been more than a week. Children of barbarians become the new tax collectors and priests. So I don't know. I suppose we've been rolling since the world was round and time makes dust of what we can't tear down. I suppose dead bodies make soil of the ground. But what about what we do now? I'm growing old in rooms full of kids with unruly haircuts. Taking what comfort we can. In the fact that every empire's days are numbered now. But I don't think I can count. someone to blame and caboose isn't here <coughs> ah i'll be right back Ah. All right. All right. Sorry about that. I left you with silence, too. That's uncomfortable. Oh. All right. Gah. Oh, it's so much nicer. <clears throat> All right. Oh, I can't stand the pulsing. I need to get a get that sorted. <sighs> oh. Yes. Oh, cancel. Did I push that button accidentally? It looks like I pushed that button accidentally. Cool. Uh, I was listening to James Baldwin anyway. <laughs> What's a James Baldwin? Oh, that guy. Okay. If you told me the guy who wrote Go Tell It on the Mountain, I'd be like, oh, okay. Oh, hello, Agony. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, 
just have vertical mine shafts here. Everybody ready? Deep breath, deep breath. Here we go. Oh, Jesus Christ. Just waiting to see it on the feed. Hold on. Jesus Christ, that's a ways behind. I mean, that's a solid 12 seconds. 15? Wow. Quite a delay. Hey, Crimson. <clears throat> Did you debate with uh, William F. Buckley? All right. I might actually watch that, Marcus. Uh, hey, Puka. Uh, Vin Scully died. I mean, I don't... I, I know my community, I know, I know like this community, right? Like I, I know my people. Um, most of you, like a bunch of you probably don't even know who the fuck Vin, Scull Vin Scully is. Um, but like Crimson and fucking fetus. <clears throat> the watch Crimson knows who exactly who Vin Scully is. Like, oh yeah, my dad was to or some shit like that. Uh, a Ramsey, I wouldn't expect you to know who Vin Scully is uh, at all. Um, Kavas, not surprised at all. You don't know who Vin Scully is? Nope. Yeah, I'm not, not surprised. Um, but yeah, Vin Scully died. Uh, Vin Scully was the voice of the LA Dodgers. Uh, if you listened to, uh, a baseball game, if from 1940 something on, um, it was Vin Scully's voice you heard. Um. Uh, Dude, dude was born in like 27. Um, yeah, he, he, he was, he was, he was the, the announcer who was featured on the radio, st the local radio station in Los Angeles, California that was syndicated nationally, who covered and gave voice to and provided color commentary and facts about the LA Dodgers baseball team as they played in the stadium. So for many um, like sports ball Americans, Vin Scully is a, a voice you can hear. Like Vin Scully is, it's like in that Cron Walter Cronkite shit for like, you know, certain generations, you can hear this voice in your head because it was ubiquitous. Vin Scully is one of those voices. <clears throat> Yeah, he, uh, like, Vin Scully. Okay, here. Um, let's see if I can prove this. Hold on. Um, Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Saturday to you. Couldn't resist that. There is a picture that they just showed a moment ago, and it shows Jackie Robinson and Vin Scully poised to race on ice skates. <clears throat> he was friends with Jackie Robinson. F for those of you that speak American and you speak some level of sport ball. Jackie Robinson, especially if you're black, Marcus alone, you should know who Jackie Robinson is just because you're black and you know it. Even if you're not a sports ball person. Marcus, you know who Jackie Robinson is, don't you? Yeah, Cat, first, bl first black baseball player for the normies. Yeah. Vin is old school this dude goes back he was there for it he was friends with him they got along he's got stories like for real and it was the end of my first year and the dodgers had asked me to go to grossinger's a well-known resort hotel in the catskill mountains in new york and being a kid having grown up with the snow and the ice in New York, I had a great pair of skates. I was a pretty good skater. 
Jackie and Rachel arrived in almost the same time. And Jackie looked at me and he said, oh, you're going to go skating? I said, yeah. He said, I'll go with you. I said, great. And then Rachel said, well, I'll go too. Rachel was seven months pregnant. <laughs> we tried to talk her out of it, but just like Jackie, her mind was set. She was going to go ice skating. So Jackie and I go into the dressing room. We're putting on the skates, my big long racer blades, really hot dog stuff back then. And uh, as we're lacing things up, Jack said, uh, when we get out there, I'll race you. I said, wow, Jack. I said, you're from Southern California. I know you're a great athlete, but I didn't know you ice skated. And he said, I've never been on skates in my life. I said, well, wait a minute. I said, I'm not a great skater, but I can certainly beat someone who's never been on skates in his life. And Jackie got very serious and said, yes, but that's how I'll learn. The competitive spirit would drive him to learn. Meanwhile, talking about competitive spirit, my heart was in my mouth, not because of Jackie, but I look out on the ice and here she comes, Rachel, seven or eight months pregnant, and the whole place is terrified except her. She is absolutely having a wonderful time. And unless my chronology is wrong, that small baby in her tummy at the time was Sharon, who was born in 1950. Now I have one other story. I've told this story before, but come to think of it, I've told every story before. <laughs> but I'd like to hear it again, if you don't mind. He was terribly charismatic. Jackie Robinson. It was back about 1950, maybe 51, not more, more than that. And Jackie, who had received other threatening letters, apparently received one that was deadly serious and impressed the authorities. We were in Cincinnati for a weekend series to play at Crosley Field. The letter intimated the deed would be done on Sunday. Sunday morning when the team was in the bus going to the dressing room, it was pretty quiet. And in the dressing room, it was very quiet. This was the most serious pregame atmosphere probably in the game. Everyone was worried. And it was very quiet. And the Dodgers had a young left fielder by the name of Gene Hermansky. And Gene was colorful, bright, blonde, white, and full of you know what. And with this <clears throat> quiet atmosphere in the clubhouse, Gene suddenly said, I've got it. And everybody looked and they said, what? He said, we'll all wear number 42 and they'll never know which one is Jackie Robinson. <laughs> now that seemed funny at the day. In 1997, Jackie's number was retired. And in 2004, Gene Hermansky's words from 1950 came to fruition. We'll all wear number 42. So tonight, when the Dodgers in Arizona line up on the foul lines, they'll be wearing 42. And all across the country, in every major league ballpark, every player, will be wearing 42. And what does the 42 mean? It doesn't mean that they're all equal, not in the respect. Some are taller than others. Some are heavier than others. Some are left-handed. Some are right-handed. But the one thing they share in carrying number 42 is the fact that the man who wore it gave them the one thing that no one at the time could ever have done. He gave them equality and he gave them opportunity those were the two things that many of those people never had to hold of their hearts when they first began to play so yes 42 is a great number it means a lot for a great man but it is a tremendous number when you think of the man who wore it with such dignity with such pride and with such great discipline and wasn't it sweet that he had Rachel on his arm. Love you, Rachel. Thank you.
Yeah. He knew them. <clears throat> that dude lived through a lot. A lot. <laughs> like a lot, lot. Uh, what's my opinion on China and Taiwan? <clears throat> Authoritarian regimes are intrinsically, inherently, and expressively the incorrect methodology for how we should organize ourselves as a, as a species. With that being said, <clears throat> I also recognize the historical significance of the um, origination of the governance that is set up in Taiwan, <clears throat> given they are government in exile and that the Chinese government at present is in fact a arguably usurper group from within. Now, understanding these nuances and some of the nuances of Mao and what happened to the, re the remainder um, and the four after, um, after he passed, and how Chinese regimes change, and understanding the Genghis, uh, <laughs> uh, the Genghis um, economic and uh, socioeconomic influence that was brought on by those reforms within China, and the importance of faith, uh, <laughs> faith, faith uh, within that specific subset of cultures. I would like, frankly, to see an overhaul of all of their governments to a certain degree. Another, just as I would like to see an overhaul of our system of governance, because you're speaking to an anarchist. Like, at the end of the day, what's my opinion on Taiwan and China? Nation states are fighting, which is always a goofy idea when we draw up imaginary lines around ourselves and fight with each other over it. That's always a fun time when somebody does that. Um, and then to do it over <clears throat> a questionable ideology, shall we say, uh, coming as an anarchist, um, uh, you got to side with Taiwan on this one. Just if you like your computers. The fact of the matter is, is there's no ethical winner in this group historically or contemporarily. Taiwan asking for independence is something that Americans probably should it should resonate with. So that should probably play upon uh, a more emotive uh, influence. <laughs> but at the end of the day, if you want to be brass tacks about it, we, <clears throat> we need a certain stability from the Taiwanese government and the Taiwanese uh, economy and the manufacturing sector there. Their semiconductor trade is crucial on a global scale. So we have to recognize that pragmatically. So no matter how you feel about it, <clears throat> If you want China to be in complete control of the electronic supply line up to and including the very high-tech stuff, you probably should come down on the Taiwan side if you're, you know, of any mind of anti-authoritarian mindedness. Uh, yeah, except they're doing it authoritatively. Fuck that. Any group of people should be able to say, fuck off. That's, that's just collectivization. That's, that's, that's free autonomy. That's free association. Fuck all that authoritarian bullshit. Fuck all that annexation. Fuck all that imperialist moves. Because that's what that is. That's imperialism. That's imperialism. Let's just call it what it is. It's good old-fashioned European imperialism. So... Taiwan doesn't want China. They, they, they tow a very distinct line uh, at the governmental level and up to and including, uh, I'm sorry, up to the most recent um, NSC spokesperson announcement from our side, we have historically also towed a very nebulous line um, officially. 
uh, but then economically speaking, you can read the room. We very much support Taiwan. No, it wasn't Edon. No, it wasn't the communist coup. Beast, sober the fuck up. Um, it wasn't the communist coup that drove the government in exile in Taiwan to Taiwan. That wasn't the, that wasn't the initiating force for that. But you do at least understand that they're, you know, a government in exile. Um, so I'll give you credit for knowing something most people in the room don't usually know. Uh, in theory, but that phrase is doing a lot of work, to be fair. Um, nations aren't real. Unifying without consent isn't unifying. It's imperial conquest coming from a, for a former, uh, look, 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 citizen of a former old school European empire. Yes, old school. <clears throat> Dutch eats India. Mm. Yeah, you guys got up to some shenanigans. Uh, Netherlands, for those not picking up on the cues here. Yeah, citizen of one of the old school European nation <laughs> empires. Fucking nations aren't real. Unifying without consent isn't unifying. It's imperial conquest. Just what it is. <clears throat> Oh, Daz, uh, it's very easy to imagine why they want this particular stretch of land. This particular stretch of land has the, the global, uh, like, high-spec silicon chip manufacturing market pretty much cornered. This is, dude, this is important for China. Also, it's about face. Dude, <clears throat> those... <clears throat> Those cultures over there, and by over there, I mean the general um, Chinese, it's generally Chinese-influenced cultures. They have, they're obsessed with this honor system, this face stuff. It matters. Your reputation matters. And Taiwan sitting out there, as far as they're concerned, it's all, it's all China. It's all China. Just the same way Russia is concerned, it's all Russia. They're like, yeah, I don't really, like all these like ex-Soviet states, they don't really see them as at, uh, at, like X. They see them as still theirs. It just is what it is. Um, but also, yeah, um, China is facing a demographical collapse. <clears throat> They're actually consider instituting a two-child requirement um, and encouraging them to ha uh, the 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 population to have more. Um, they're they're facing a demographical collapse right now. Actually, uh, you you key that in combination with their uh, <clears throat> reliance upon manipulating the real estate, construction, and housing markets for speculative gain uh, is also uh, quickly coming to a close. It seems like um, it, there's increasing. I mean, they had to put tanks in the streets. They had to put tanks in the streets. They put tanks in the streets because people wanted their money. People wanted their money. They said, hey, uh, we'd like to withdraw our money. And China said, hey, that's now an investment property. And it's considered like a public access funds. And we have control of it now. Um, and by the way, um, you're protesting. Here are tanks. So that's going great. Um, you know, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're facing a couple of issues. Uh, when? Oh, uh, re just recently. It was the, um, I mean, just look up the keywords. Ch China banks uh, uh, pro uh, protest tanks. <laughs> Here we go. Um It is the um, boom. I mean, like last week, week before. Um, 
the Henan, Henan branch of the Bank of China declared that the people's savings are now investment products and can't be withdrawn. And down the road, they're protesting the bank. Um, bank um, there that'll get the job done um, let's see protest uh, mm. let's go for that And then, oh, Jesus Christ, is that really a thing? <laughs> straight up. Straight up. It, I swear to God, if I have to put, yep, done. Nope, fuck your site. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's it's even... Yeah, the, the, the cracks, 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 cracks. It, it, it's, you combine that with the, their demographics, it's a problem, it's a problem, it's a problem. And Russia's facing a bunch too. Russia's facing a bunch too. Um, Russia's got a demographics problem too, like a big one. It, it, it's, these are the sorts of moves you make when you need to make them. A lot of these moves are desperation moves. Like these are plays for out of necessity in some instances. Rush's is 100% necessity. <laughs> He's got dictator dilemma problems. He's got resource and demographics issues. He's got production issues. He's got fucking, dude. And the fact that they basically flee, eventually the people are going to figure out like how much they spent. Like this truth of the matter is one day, like, there will be a moment where the Russian public sort of just comes to bear with it. That like, holy shit, he fleeced us for a lot. Like uh, Marcos in the Philippines. You know, it's like, how much did they make away with? You know, some real money. Some real money. So, yeah. It, it's, it's more complicated than a lot of people would like to think it is. There's a lot of hands moving. There's a lot of people m making plays for a lot of reasons. Most of them corrupt and greedy, but the, a lot of it, many times is they, they kind of sort of contraindicate each other. It's, it's you know, uh, billions, if I recall, says Marcus. Yeah, dude, he, he made out with billions. Dude, Putin's going to set the new number. You know that, right? Putin's going to set the new number. He's going to set the new number. When we figure out how much, oh, it's going to be a number. I'm expecting a trillion plus between him and his cronies. I'm expecting a trillion. I really am. I mean, they have been fleecing that country hard. <laughs> I think for my friends in Russia, I, I just can't say anything. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, now I'm buying it. Did you say something above? Um, <clears throat> okay, cool. Um, so what do you think would happen if China invades Taiwan? Ah, fuck me. I mean, as long as the trade isn't interrupted, most of the world won't do shit. Touch the trade, and there might be an issue. That's the, that's, that's where it lies. It lies with the trade. It's economics. You fuck with the economics of Taiwan. You're fine. I, I, I mean, if you don't fuck with the, the economics of Taiwan, you're fine. Honestly, I think the rest of the world would do nothing. Um, if you fuck with the economics in the production of those chipsets, 
then the world might have an issue. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you look like you're going to go in really, really hot and fuck the place up, the world might actually like have something to say. Uh, maybe, maybe. <sighs> but we need that. We need Taiwan right now. We need Taiwan right now. We're not ready for them not to exist. Uh, the only the only reason Ukraine didn't fucking die is because they had an application to the NATO that was accepted. Uh, Russia was not doing great in that fight to start with. I mean, come on. Be be honest with yourself. Fucking, what's your name? Dexter boy? Okay, we're calling you Dex because there's no fucking way I'm saying that. Um, <clears throat> Dex. Russia was not doing well. Look, I, that was a shit show. That was a f- poor outing. And anybody who's ever paid any lick of attention to a military campaign in their life no, has to admit to themselves, like, holy shit, that was not good. That was a very poor outing. Like, you, you need to, like, that was bad. That was bad. Oh. An absolute disaster for the entire world. Taiwan would be the biggest military landing ever as mountainous and fortified. The chip supply we all, including China's military, rely on for technology would drop. No one would win. Is taking a mountainous island militarily is stupid difficult, says a Ramsey. Yeah, I, I, I get China out of the Philippines. I mean, if the Philippines, I mean, we need to, but I mean, it's up to the, it's up to the people of the archipelago to determine their own future. If they want assistance, I'm sure there's assistance to be had, but that's at the end of the day. Like, I mean, I am an anarchist, right? I have a soft spot for the Philippines, uh, the archipelago, as I prefer to call it, because that's what the indigenous people prefer to call it from as uh, from my understanding is that's that's the the reference term is the archipelago. Um, so. I would leave it up to them, but there's a lot of opinions. There's going to be a lot of differing opinions. And so, I mean, it's sort of up to them. Oh. Japan or Korea, Japan and Korea are sheeps to the U S I mean, South Korea is quickly becoming a force unto their own. Japan's still handicapped to a certain degree due to like world war two. <laughs> there was, there were agreements made. Um, so, but South Korea very quickly caught up and they have some really high tech fucking modern military gear. Can they stand up to like the full force China can bear? No, but can they stand up in like a regional skirmish? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're well kitted out. Um, so don't, don't write off South Korea is, you know, solely a puppet state. They're, they are their own player in very several ways. Um, so they've got some manufacturing force too. They can make shit like nuclear subs, like they can make shit. Yeah. They're just in a very vulnerable position. That's all. The UK would have a shitload to say if they stop the chips from uh, being made cooked. I mean, and the UK, you're, I mean, non-binary, you're, I mean, the UK can say some shit. They're, they're, again, they're a small island, but you bring a lot of force to bear. The, the UK, the, the fucking, the British military is a thing. It's a fucking thing. They're the SAS for fuck's sake. Do not write them off. They are a small group, but they can definitely put some damage in. Fucking high DPS with that lot. Oh, uh, the fish and chips? No. Fucking, oh, that went right over my head, non-binary. That sucks, but yeah, sorry. But you guys would fuck some stuff up, and you know it. Uh, just in time, chip manufacturer means the UK have no voice. Um, it, it, that Taiwan matters. It matters. This is the, this is this is why we've been so hesitant for so long. And by we, I mean everyone. Everyone. No one wants to force this issue. Taiwan is a f- critical thing. Clever Taiwan too, by the way. Clever as fuck. Whoever campaigned that. Whoever figured like. Whatever that moment was when somebody was like, oh, shit, I think we could position ourselves as globally critical. What? Yeah. Think about it. If we do this, 
and this. If this happens, then this could be the outcome. You know, at a certain point, somebody had to have in those level, you know, the levels of corporate and government influ- uh, like inter uh, interference or, uh, you know, interlacing, they, you know, oh, we're positioned to become the de facto. Hmm, okay. Yeah. Taiwan matters. I mean, what's her face even fucking went over there? Skeletor herself. <laughs> uh, oh, McNugget. Most of our most of our good military ideas, like in the modern era, to even our special forces and flash forces like that, highly British inspired. Um, I. Don't think so, not my right. Uh, that's not a conflict that Ukraine is interested in doing. That's not a fucking conflict. Catch you later, Dig. Yeah, that's not that's there's no yeah, no, there's a that's not a conflict that Ukraine wants to get into, for sure. They they wanna they wanna they wanna kick Russia the fuck out of the, what they see as their sovereign land, and they want to just get on with what they want to get on with. It seems like It'd be great if they uh, took a little extra land for their uh, troubles, though. That'd be funny. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> little little mob cut right there. Just a little like yeah. <laughs> You took us, we take you. Uh, we just further destabilize the reason, region. It would be a poor political move, but it's an amusing thought. Seeing as they have more tanks than when they started. Jesus Christ, Russia, you're never living that down. People who even like advocate or support or stand Russia understand this. Russia is never living this down. They, Ukraine has more tanks than when they started the war. That's that's fucking hilarious. You were supply lining to your enemy better than you were supply lining to your own soldiers. Like this is this is hilarious at this point. No, it's it's Russia's never living that one down. Uh, <laughs> um. We could, re- Taiwan could repel a Chinese attack long enough for the world to make their fucking minds up. They could, they could repel an initial invasion. Yeah, they could. Their terrain's ridiculous. Their fucking landing on that island is ridiculous. It's gonna, it's gonna be a whole thing. It's gonna be a whole thing. And they do have gear. They do have gear. <laughs> We've been arming them for a while, for a long while. We've had so many weapons. I think they have the Aegis uh, radar system too. Even I don't know. Maybe I think they may do. They may have that too. Even um, I think someone needs a demonstration of Chinese rifle technology. I want <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> which is default to it, but I mean Jesus. They can't. They can't make anything. China can't make anything. They're bad. They're bad at this. They're bad at this. It's, dude, it's all half-assed copied U.S. stolen IP. Like a lot, a lot, a lot. Like a lot, a lot. It's fucking, it's sad. Uh, I don't think everything the U.S. gave Taiwan is even publicly known. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, we had backroom dealings and, yeah, that sort of thing, Ramsey, for sure. Um, yeah, we've, we've given them a lot of gear over the years. I, I'm, I'm, I'm certain they could repel a Chinese invasion long enough for, the rest, for them to basically turn to the rest of the world and say, do you want your chips or not? And then moves would have to be made. Uh, 
Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So they have their own rifles. I bet their rifles shoot well. Um, hold on. All right. So, um, okay. So quick question. Um, I'm just curious here. Um, okay. So Taiwan has their own rifle, their own designed rifle, but with the capabilities of the PLA in mind, they specifically engineer their assault rifle to outdo specific versions of the QBZ line, specifically the QBZ 95 the, and the, uh, the type 81 assault rifle that the PLA uses. So the Taiwanese military, apparently when they were developing these, their armaments specifically took the Chinese versions in mind. Um, okay. That's cool. So let's, let's check a QBZ 191 then. How do they, how do they fare? Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. They can't deliver anything on target, um, and the bullets tumble. Cool. All right. Um, good, good faith, operating in good faith. Uh, plastic rounds could potentially explain that, or um, underpowered loads. Um, although I'd still, at that, that many, at that distance, I think a soft load would not necessarily uh but good faith good faith good faith uh, a plastic round could potentially tumble at that rate but it's not a good look either way um <clears throat> they're keyholing instead Oh, that's a nice, it's, oh, come on, that's. Carrier design, I'll show you this really quick. So with short skirt gas pistons, you have to worry about carrier tilt. Yeah. That's because the gas piston is tapping on a little tappet that's forward on the. Let me see it. And then we had this one. Solid. So. Okay. Yeah, fire's nice. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice rifle. I like it. Um, so I, you know, Taiwan matters. They're positioned well militarily. They can produce their own. <laughs> yeah, it does a keyhole. What a, what a, what a concept. Um, they've had backroom deals with the U.S. for years. I, I think there's, I think they're in a position where, like, if China really, really tried to make moves, they could hold them. So in other words, Taiwan's rifles actually work. I mean, look. Uh, what do you mean by work, Caboose, really? I mean, when we, we talk about a rifle working, right? Like, what is the purpose of a rifle? A rifle could have many purposes. I mean, there, there could be... There, there, in, there could be aesthetics. It could be, you know... Uh, uh, political could, it could have purpose for that it could you know it could, all sorts of th reasons why that it might not uh, dolly they build them they don't design them there really is a a, a, a a really intentional difference and the equipment that they build them with is built in Europe it's built in Dutchy land. Hey, Ramsey, you're still here for a whole fucking one, right? Ramsey, it's it's y'all we're pressuring right now to try and get you guys to stop um, selling the equipment to China that builds that helps build these uh, chips. It, it's that that yeah, it, it's the equipment to build the stuff comes from Europe, and the stuff gets designed in the U.S. That's that's what I mean. iPhones are literally that. Your example of China builds iPhones. iPhones de designed in California. Assembled in China. That's that's literally the that's very specifically they do that. It's f the reason we offshored it was the lot. Look, I'm not going to defend outsourcing, but the logic as far as like a globalist um, sort of um, tr 
treaty specific outlook on this would go. Um, the logic se is seemingly is that we offloaded the, uh, the lower performing segments of the manufacturing industry to an up and coming uh, economy that would uh, tolerate and support a lower uh, wage at a higher production rate. Right. It's it's an ex it's extraordinarily coercive and exploitative what we actually did. Um, it does have long term ramifications, but that was, you know, that was a future people's problem. Right. That's that's how Western late stage capitalism specifically works is. Eventually, it has to turn inwardly. Economy. Chinese, the, the Chinese don't reverse engineer by and large. They just, just use um, espionage and uh, intelligence service. It's much easier. You just pay for it. You get uh, you get somebody in the si inside of a corporation who has access to the the, de uh, the details. You blackmail them. You coerce them. You pay them off. Whatever. Yeah, it, corporate espionage is much more effective than reverse engineering. Reverse engineering takes time and technical uh, technical effort. You can just get the frontline schematics you need if you just infiltrate a corporation. And they're perfectly willing to implement uh, state assets to do so. It's not like if a corporation wants to get some like high-tech military gear out of the U.S., fucking the Chinese government will be like right there helping them. What do you, how do you think that's going to work? So they'll implement state, uh, nation state ass assets to make those gains. So, you know. Yeah, cast away. Yeah, it takes time. It, it's, it's much easier just to pay off some fucking guilty engineer somewhere for a, for a USB stick. It's way easier. Viva, you can do both, and I mean, you probably will in certain aspects. Some of them you're probably going to have to reverse engineer because some of that shit's probably going to be locked up tight. You know, some of those military assets, yeah, you're probably going to have to work at some of that. But again, they'll, they'll do whatever, they'll do whatever, you know, easy to whatever's necessary. It's not complicated. Literally piracy on a corporate level. Yeah. None of your tech is built in the U.S. No, most people's tech isn't built in their own country. And if you conclude designing in a lot of fucking aspects as part of the build process, which you should, China has to have a conversation then about whether their, their stuff is built in their country or not. Yeah, AMD's come a ways. <laughs> I don't, you know, I've I've been happy thus far. I have a Ryzen nine, um, thirty nine hundred X. Uh, so I got like twelve cores. Um, that I was gonna do the fucking Threadripper, but I couldn't just. If, it was like an extra fourteen hundred dollars or some shit. I'm like, oh fuck that. Yeah, AMD's come a ways. I'm happy with what I have. Current gen. Last gen. It's probably last gen now. Ryzen 5 3600. Still chugging along well. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy with the Ryzen series. I, you know, my last rig was an, uh, was an Intel. This one's an AMD. I'll, I'll, I'll move to whoever's got the best gear at the time for what I'm trying to do. It's that simple. Like, I don't, who, why, what, what are you doing brand loyalty and technology? That's stupid. <laughs> That's stupid. That's you should have zero brand loyalty in technology. It should be as they should be as good as their last fucking product outing. It's just that simple. It's fucking. You still building good shit? Good. All right. Cool. Uh yeah. Ryzen nine fifty nine fifty X. Pretty good. Says Astral. Uh Ramsey, my AMD uh, CPU is holding up great so far. Yeah. 
Um, by the way, the UK is not a small island. Are we, how are we? Don't care. <laughs> Hong Kong lost, Dolly. Hong Kong lost. China completely captured their government. They're in control. China, Hong Kong lost. You want to know why people don't care about Hong Kong anymore? It's because they lost. That's now a different fight. Gemma, that I was like, how is Britain not a small island? <laughs> Look at the scale we're talking about. I want to load to NVIDIA because RTX is stream processor. Um... It's a different fight now. Shit, it, it is. So I'm only thinking about those Russian soldiers who went through the radiator for. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, not well, Axel. Not well. Yeah, the fucking dudes that dug up the Chernobyl fucking forest. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Yeah, those motherfuckers are dead. <laughs> I mean, they're probably not dead, but Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, no, they, they dug up all of that and fucking trenched and by all accounts those early reports none of those early dudes fucking were wearing any level of protective gear oh took being a content creator the rise of nine thing you said or prostitutes honestly I really struggle to find the difference between a prostitute and a content creator job because your last blow job yeah um oh dear sweet Jesus what's going on in there I don't care. Zippy, thank you for the uh, Daddy Bezos bucks, by the way. Um, I came off alert and I didn't have Cappy. I thought I'd died and gone to hell. I have to head. I avoid branches in tech. No Apple products for me. I, dude, I'm fine with the Apple, like, tablet and phone. It's all, they all have blood on them. They all have blood on them. Just accept that. I'm fine with the ab Apple tablet and phone. I really am. Um, I would never have an Apple computer in a million years. Like, that is a god-awful way to work on a computer. I'm sorry, it just is. It's a terrible fucking platform. Tablet and phone, great. I like them, I really do. Um, but I would never, ever, ever run a Mac. That's just... Sure. I mean, it's a choice. Yeah. Fair enough, no matter. Um, I really wonder how the national courts are going to handle all the shit that the Russian military has gotten up to. Dude, there, dude there's like 21,000 war crime investigations at this point, like case files or some shit like that. It's ridiculous. Uh, to be fair, it's about 1,000 kilometers long, including Scotland, and up to around 200 kilometers wide at some points. But that's about the same surface area as Texas, or Australia's smallest mainland state. <laughs> um... Did uh, John Cena already apologize for Nancy's visit? I know, right? That was the saddest video. That was the saddest video. But we did learn John Cena's pretty uh, competent Mandarin speaker. By all accounts. Apparently John Cena is a pretty decent Mandarin speaker in Mandarin. Huh? Who would have guessed? Um, the Pro Lens used to be okay, but they went uh, hog on small expense at usable. Um, <laughs> I, I like the platform. Like I said, after all, it's very, like, I don't want a whole lot of like bullshit to deal with on my mobile platform, right? My desktop, I want as much capability as I can possibly cram into a thing, right? I like, I've got my iPad pro. I've got one of the, I think it's 12.9. Like um, I like it. I like the, the, the pencil, uh, you know, I like my iPhone. They talk to each other. It's great. I, I'm happy with that. But 
it's a miserable desktop experience. It's just, oh, all right. Oh, I don't even care. There we go. John Cena taught me how to say ice cream in Mandarin. I literally don't think I'll ever forget the meaning of being chilly. Jesus. Uh, what? I, I. What? All right. Um. Mm hmm. Uh, Dolly, that very same crack that you're, uh, you're leveling towards Britain about how they needed to let East Asians in to make good food and then UKIP, uh, pretty much sounds like the U.S. I think that, that, um, that comment works pretty well for, uh, our south of the border neighbors, doesn't it? Yes. And of course our neighbors who the border crossed because let's face it they were here before most of us <laughs> we just moved the border that's all um hey latte um yeah a ramsey it'll 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 be fucking It will, it, it'll be show trials, if anything. The thing keeping me on the Apple phone is my music, app data, and pictures being seamlessly transferred from one to another. Also, my a Apple phones literally last me like seven plus years. Yeah, Latte, I've got a seven, uh, a seven plus, right? Like that's, that's what I have. I've got like the, the last one with the, the, the fingerprint, right? I like the fucking button. Even though I like it, the fact that it's not even a real button. I'm fine with that. I just, I need the fucking home button. Um, yeah, no, I feel you on that one. Uh, Vate. Um, easy transfer. It is, it is the se most seamless of transfers, especially these days. It even holds all of your like layouts and folder layouts and everything. Just you move from one to the other and that's it. I've got a 6S and it's just start now starting to slow down. Yeah. Yeah. It, they make it super easy to stay in the ecosystem. Okay. Actually... Uh, like old school traditional British food is actually really fucking delicious um, because it's the kind of basics of cuisine that everybody can vibe with. A lot of nose to tail sort of butchery and eating a lot of, um, of the, the sort of intestinal arts. Um, sorry, Dolly, it is. <laughs> A lot of aged cheddar. Um, they're really good at fucking, um, preserved and, um, like fermented foods. That part of the world is. You have to. Preservation, man. Preservation. Oh, all right. Now, let me scroll back to the past that fucking stupid rifle. Oh, y'all want to see, um, here, you'll enjoy this. I'm sure you'll enjoy this. All right.
Oh, Jesus. A Ramsey. Duly noted. Duly noted. Papa, I... It depends, Papa, it depends who uh, pre- who has prepared the menudo. I got to tell you, there's some rank menudos out there. There's some ripe fucking menudos out there. But there's menudos out there that are ethereal and delicious. So it just depends on who prepares it. It really, really does. Um, some of the best food in the world uh, in the UK because it's such a melting pot for di- uh, for different food cultures like chicken tikka masala is from the UK. It's not made in India. It's a curry made by uh, in the UK by Curry House because British people are not used to the spice. This is non-binary. Yep. Okay, go back uh, hundreds of years, Dolly. Your timeline is wrong. So feel free to nope. But it doesn't take personal anecdotes. It takes historical texts. And people have actually written on this and done entire shows on this. There's documentaries about the, the, the more, shall, almost, shall we call the indigenous food of Britain? What a concept. So I've got three. Okay. You're going you're gonna to love it. Hold on. Let me get this fucking thing turned up. Questions that I want to ask atheists and these aren't gotcha questions i'm like i sincerely want to know sincerely okay he he's he he doesn't he he thinks he thinks that he the one he's presenting this in the form that these aren't gotcha questions they're gotcha questions they're 100 percent intended to be gotcha questions so just know that he thinks he thinks that he has got atheists in a fucking bind here by the way, if you're new on the channel, if you don't know me, I'm not a fucking atheist. <laughs> this is, I'm just not a theist um, at all. Fucking, it's, I'm 100% agnostic on this topic. He, um, but he really thinks he's got some atheists in a bind. Yeah, right? This is, this is hilarious. So I've got three questions that I want to ask atheists and these aren't gotcha questions i'm like i sincerely want to know sincerely sincerely want to know the answer to these questions first question is do you believe that god does not exist so you kind of either have that belief or you don't you either believe that god does not exist or you don't if you answered yes to that then you're ready for the next question the next question is do you believe in evidentialism Evidentialism is the view that your beliefs ought to be proportioned to the evidence. You shouldn't just believe something without evidence. Those are the first two questions. If you answered yes to both of those, if you have the belief that God does not exist, and you also believe in evidentialism, you're ready for the third question. The third question is, what is your evidence that justifies your belief that God does not exist? <laughs> I think a Ramsey got it close closest to how I would respond to it. I really do. I think I think a Ramsey's probably closest to how I, I, I would one, not convinced but don't know. Two, yeah, evidence is a thing. Three, not my burden of proof, buddy. <laughs> the fact that you even put a buddy on there as a non native uh speaker, that's that's I love that. That's just like, yeah, fuck you, buddy. Uh, make Olympus great again. <laughs> Moga. Oh my God. No, it's, it's fun. It's fun. Can we bring Loki back? I mean, oh, uh, when Mitch, by the way, thanks for the follow. Uh, I'm 100%. Let's start bringing back the old gods. Debbie, I'm fine with that. Jesus fucking Christ. What is going on in there? Oh, we're just cleaning house. Got it. Oh. 
<laughs> Wait, did somebody say meds? Hold on. Ah, uh, yes. The answer for three is very simple. My doctor told me not to listen to voices in my head, and when I do, increases my meds. Fair enough, non-binary. Um... A lot to I'm kind of an atheist, but I'm not like the cringy ones. I've just not had those spiritual experiences personally, but I know people who have, so I'm conflicted. My stepsister says my third eye is closed. Yeah, keep an, keep an eye on that stepsister shit. That third eye. Yeah, watch out for that latte. That gets culty quick. Um, but ah, it's it's just I I latte. I, I have my one percent rule. I put an asterisk on everything in life. Everything. Um. Because I don't know the nature of existence. I can't ever know that. That's just, that's beyond human understanding. So I just sort of like, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I can't know. So if I can't know it, why should I care? Right? Like if it's truly beyond me, that sounds like that's like you, you like you, well, we're lifting the ocean. Well, that sounds like a you problem because there's nothing I can do to help lift the ocean. Like that's not a thing I'm I'm capable of doing. So, you know, I, I it is what it is. I'm very just agnostic about it at this point in my life. I'm like, I don't know. And anybody who says they do know or they have an idea about it, they're fucking crazy or working you. Just know that. Uh, <laughs> I'm in favor of the old Greek pantheon. Cupcake, I kind of am too because they were humanistic, right? They modeled them after themselves. They didn't pretend that the gods were somehow superior morally or ethically. They, were, they had the same foibles and failings and traits and tropes of, of humanity because they were modeled after humanity. They were supposed to explain things with us and it and there and the fucking, you know, the traditional reason to have gods, but with a flair. Um, yeah, I, I'd be down for it. Uh, let's see. Uh, the checkmate question for religious people. Does soul exist? How do you know it exists? Ah, they're going to give you an answer, Astral. You won't be happy with it, but they're going to give you an answer. Um, <laughs> God moved on to a better planet with peaceful people. Uh, peaceful people. Earth was a failed beta test. That's a, Eden, create a religion. Done. Honestly, my whole thing on theism is basically if there's an all-knowing God, he would know uh, what would convince me of his existence and is choosing not to do so. Fair enough. Or he just doesn't care. Which is a respectable position for a, a true God, I suppose. Um, oh, she's self-aware. She doubts stuff herself. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> and if God is a dickwad, the results of their operation would be identical to chaos, so we don't care. Yeah. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. Can you change the nature of God? If God exists and God, this is what God's will is, can you do anything to change the nature of God's will? No? W what are you doing then? Just cruise. Just cruise. If there isn't a God, then why am I here uh, smothering a demiglaze like I've lost all control of my life? Checkmate, atheists. Oh, mothering a demiglaze. Smothering. Mothering a demiglaze like I've lost all control of my life. Are you actually doing that, Marcus? And good on you if you are. Um, I may say, I may know, but it's my secret. Mine! Oh, Kvaz. <laughs> Fair enough, Amherst. Yes, that is exactly how fucking it, that that logical process works. Um, yeah, okay. It doesn't do anything. So, at the end of the day, you might as well be agnostic about it. Like, what's your opinion on it? I don't know, and I can't know, so I don't care. It's a pretty disarming position, I've found at least. That like it's not it's it's the fact that atheists are against theists that the friction happens when you just even the most like 
evangelical usually like when they're confronted with something as blatant as i don't know and i don't think i can know so why should i care i'm just gonna live my life as trying to be the best person i can be and let things fall where they may done like it's very disarming for a religious person to, to encounter that they're usually ready for a fight when it's just like, yeah, I, I, that problem's way beyond me. I can't do that one. Jesus went to Tibet. Possibly. Ah, I don't, did, rumble. I mean, if you want to get into it with somebody and you're feeling ornery, I mean, feel free, but I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. Um, the standard response is argument on my baculum. You should care. You get the sword. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I'll see you in the battlefield. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm okay with that argument. Truly astral. I'm an American. I'm, I'm comfortable with this idea. Yeah. It's okay. So it shall be. Uh, a Ramsey. No gods, no masters until proven otherwise. Yeah, that's my default position. It's like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm not going to act like I fucking have uh, an invisible slave master lording over me at all times. Like, that's stupid. It's not a way to live your life. So, I'm just gonna... No. Oh, okay. So, for two suggested this or something, this devil man crybaby. I've got this tab still open. Okay, so traditional manga, da da. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me scroll down. Um, discreet wolf. Yeah. Um, there we go. <laughs> um, Marcus. I actually knew about the dried penis. I knew about that. Um, I knew about it because <laughs> from uh, the other side of the weird esoterica studies and hermeticism, because they use they used baculum as well, and that's that's where I I learned about it. <laughs> the dried penis. Yeah, because for the more esoteric preparations. They're not talking about the wood. They're talking about the wood. So yeah, it was, it served as a interesting thing. Um, Quakers are pretty cool. I don't have too many problems with Quakers. I, I don't, I don't <laughs> I gifted us up to God. Oh Jesus fucking Christ. Don't buy any. <laughs> ah, my comrade who I fucking hate. <laughs> uh, uh, I know some lovely Christians. It's a good portion though to take the death cult. It's just way too serious. <laughs> Sonny, ain't that the, ain't that always the problem when somebody takes the death cult too seriously? God damn it. Uh, so I wonder who has the god again. Just fuck it. I mean, it's just this account's gonna be. 2013 <laughs> this account just like whoever got to it first <laughs> like oh it's principal network development engineer at twitch whoever god is god is one of the twitch people yeah Which is classic IT shit. Holy fuck. One of the uh, the, the principal network engineer. <laughs> fuck it. It's the fucking rock and the God account. Jesus Christ. 
Tech bros, take it down a notch. Um. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, in the knock. Oh my god. Non-binary. Uh, are you trying to gain blessings on my behalf or some shit? Like what? How is this? <laughs> How's this playing out? <laughs> do that or uh <laughs> it's just a thing i do i've blessed my water on stream before holy water's great modern day indulgences twitch subscription gifts <laughs> i don't get how people can read the 10 commandments and not realize they're straight up about control i mean Because they were indoctrinated into a system of hierarchy and control and authoritarian thought processes from very early on, and no one in any part of their life ever gave them any of the tools that would have helped them to escape that mentality. <laughs> All right, let's see where the, the, the spinner has landed. Where has the wheel landed this time? Buddha! Buddha, congratulations, Buddha. Non-binary has gifted a sub to Buddha for balance. <laughs> uh, nominee Patra, filet of fish. Uh, fucking. <laughs> yeah, Latte, yeah, it's true. I fucking. It's just made up magic bullshit. But I'll, I can I can RP I can RP as much as the next one. Ugh, latte, they've got their problems too. Not like on the scale that the fucking Abrahamic ones have gotten up to, for sure. But they've shown the same predilections, and it, you just, you see it. It, it. There's there's a whole lot of stuff. I mean, bunch of the fucking like Mao's generals were Buddhist and shit too. Um, but like. Um, you see it in this sort of like societal willingness to set aside people because that's their, you know, that's the karmic response. Like that's their earned response from the universe. And that like, you know, their suffering is something that they should, they have to like, you know. Uh, better than even Angelicals. I mean, they've got, you know, yeah, and as Cupcake's pointing out, they have their fair share of genocides and misogyny, too. Yeah, tons of misogyny. Um, also, um, some of the monasteries have gotten up to kitty, ra kitty rape, too, just so you know. And just regular rape, too, in a few instances, and cult stuff. And humans. Humans are going to human. Humans are going to human. Yeah, that's that's just that's the rules. Humans are gonna human. <laughs> I can RP as much as the next one. How dare you? This bullshit is how I pay rent, Marcus. <laughs> oh, hey, I really do wonder what I would have been like as an attorney, Marcus. It would have been fun. It would have been fun. It's good on paper. I know, right? Um, I believe in the woo-woo in some aspects, prognostication, etc. But I don't know uh, what <laughs> what woo is being accessed. What woo is being accessed? Physics are interesting. Rex, I'm sort of in that territory. Like spooky action at a distance is fucking tri trippy as shit when you start thinking about the ramifications of that within like a universal construct. Like it's fucking weird. Like the the, the like underpinning mechanics of how our universe works are fucking weird as shit. They're weird. They, they're, they're just, they, they're like, they're, they're, nothing should work that way. 
but it does. And that's how our universe works. And it's weird as fuck. And so like, yeah, that's where my 1% comes from. It's just sort of like, how are you ever going to tell me the true nature of existence? Because shit gets weird every time we look. Every time we look a little closer, it gets weirder and weirder. <laughs> I know, right, Astro? If that turns out to be fun. I mean, if if space-time is, like, avoidable, right, Astro? Like, it fucking don't go super science-y. We're stoner level. We're doing a stoner thing here. It, it, if... If space-time is avoidable in the way that we see in some of the, like, the quantum particle and the quantum physics examples, experiments, and theorems that seem to be proving fairly reliable in a lot of instances, um, I mean, technologically, we didn't know what we were going to do with the electron, right? We had no idea upon discovery. Like, we didn't know what the fuck we were going to do with it, but we built an entire society around it. So, like, I mean, shit like that, like, who knows, like, like 200, 300 years in the future, what, like, the basis, like, the sort of, like, foundational universal technology, like, the mechanics, the stuff that makes the stuff, the firmament, right? That which hangs the universe um, could become a basis for our technology. Inshallah. Um, oh, that's right. Non-binary, rounding it out for balance, giving a subscription to Allah. Um, yeah, we don't like when we make these weird discoveries about how shit works and stuff that stuff is made of. It takes us a hundred, two hundred, three hundred years to figure out what the fuck we're gonna do with it. Sometimes, so like, yeah. I mean, it's our universe doesn't necessarily seem like it has to operate in the sort of like space methodology that there's stuff that can sort of poke in and out of it for some reason. And so if, it, if that's allowed, if that's a rule that's allowed, like if the system allows for that sort of thing, like I, the ramifications of that could be very weird, technologically speaking. <laughs> like, if we can harness that, that gets really fucking weird very quickly. Also, uh, stuff that stuff is made of is stuff and what the fourth tier stuff does. Fair enough. Uh, I, argue, I argue the differences between the judiciary is mere reality versus a desirable concept. You have to own it uh, if your hands have blood of a maniac uh, uh, on them. Oh, Jesus Christ. My contacts just shifted. Wow, that was weird. All right. That was lovely. Um, I'm going to punt and say Wheeler's theory. All electrons are the same because there's only one electron. Charge is the direction it travels in, chime, in time. I like it. I like it, Rumble. I'm down for it. If you want to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. Yep. And then a kvasa residue will be uh, will be by soon to eat it. Eat your pie. <laughs> we can't even make a cow from scratch. Yes. I mean, it's it, look, it comes from the woo-woo and the esoterica. But I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, McKenna used to say, um, science, give us one miracle and we'll explain the universe. And in a very real way, it's kind of true. It's not derogatory. His brother's he's like, it's just there's this core question that we just have to accept that not getting answered in any of our lifetimes. So just kind of get over it. <laughs> give us one miracle, we'll give you the universe. <laughs> Non-binary grant <laughs> granting a sub to quantum mechanics. Okay, first off, I gotta pop these accounts. I need to know who um, who these people are, just out of curiosity. All right, so let's go to Guru. That 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 always freaks me out, though. And it, why? Because Guru says that freaks me out. And then one of the gurus literally said, 
Um, no, no more. There shall be no more gurus after me. <laughs> Wrote a bunch of books, I think. A bunch of tomes and fucking. All right. Um, okay, quantum mechanics. Don't know anything about them. Somebody just got the account. That's 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 the shame. Allah, no description, but one point two thousand followers. Uh, Buddha, on the other hand, has eight hundred thirteen thousand followers and has Pepe hands and is apparently a hell of a streamer. Um, seems to stream multiverses, Chimera Land, but primarily Grand Theft Auto. Buddha likes GTA Five, y'all. Just so you know, Buddha likes G uh, GTA Five. Here, I will fucking sh I will prove it to you. Here is Buddha's Twitch account, and Buddha likes themselves some fucking Grand Theft Auto. Okay, that's 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 the truth of the matter. So the the truth, the light, the way Buddha says, um, is Grand Theft Auto Five, um, and Guru Nanak, um, only one follower and no description, unfortunately. Yeah, GTA RP. Yeah, it is really popular. I've seen some of the instances of it. Um, actually, not to be a cunt, but fuck you. I have no self-control. Do you want to uh, do a Supreme Court or serial killer tier list? Own uh, your questionable hard-ons. Um, serial killer is way more fun, right? Unless, unless, Marcus, you can create a fucked up Supreme Court tier list. Like, this person... Vote. It was uh, this person uh, was in you know a positive. Uh, this person wrote the uh, the affirmative decision in this case or this sort of thing, and it's like holy shit, is that what that one was? Like if you can like assemble a fucked up list of Supreme Court justices, the the serial killer list is always going to be more amusing. Probably this is like you know ranking serial killers solely on looks and ignoring all of the 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 psychosis. The Night Stalker. Um. <laughs> uh, makes sense, former prince. <laughs> oh, let's see. Okay, my brain has gone down a rabbit hole of quantum physics, the universe, and our brain. How could it explain spirituality? Latte, that'll happen. That'll happen from time to time. All right. Oh. I feel like the Buddha sofa would probably be a more Candy Crush guy. Might. Uh, oh, Jesus. Non-binary gifted to the Night Stalker because we're talking about serial killers. So who's got the Night Stalker? Four followers. And they stream World of Warcraft. The Night Stalker likes World of Warcraft, apparently. I'm not. I haven't been offered it. Probably will be that uh, next time I see, uh, see one of my doctors, though. Will I get it? Oh my god, will I get it? Yeah. Yeah, because I see having an immunological, a built in immunological response to something that is in the wild anyway, uh, in an advantageous position to be in, no matter what. 
it means I get the, the like the security update for my uh, for my software, and you don't. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll get it if I get the opportunity. <clears throat> oh, quick question: anti-vax to the max. Um, do you know why we call the uh, Spanish flu the Spanish flu? There you go, Astral. Didn't think so. Cool. Don't worry about it. Oh, let's see what else. California man sentenced to 60 days in jail for threatening to shoot a family wearing BLM t-shirts, losing his job at United Airlines. Tell me he did it at the fucking airport. <laughs> couple, a uh, couple and three young kids. Please don't make us the next Florida man. <laughs> uh, discreet Wolf. <laughs> Marcus, God, I'm a shit because I want to answer the question like a big glass. Uh, the not so discreet Wolf doing what Marcus wanted to do so desperately. Because they first, knew, uh, because the first new case, known case, came from Spain, but in reality, it came from the trenches. Spain was the first country to acknowledge. They were the first one to say, "Hey, there's a thing. It's a problem. Let's address it." Vaccine, um, COVID vaccine adherence is ninety-five percent within gay men. After the AIDS epidemic, we take these things very seriously. Our doctors take them very seriously, and we have access to it. Plain and simple. The reason monkeypox was spotted in the gay population initially was because the gay population is your canary in the coal mine. It didn't come from the gay population. It's in the wild. Plenty of people. The locations that it was initially spotted are notorious party locations. It was just spotted from the gay population because the fact of the matter is, is they have better oversight and care within the medical community. <sighs> Illness was bad for morale. I too have heard the Kansas thing, but I've never seen any necessarily hard evidence, but I'm, hey, if it exists. I, I've heard the Kansas thing as well. Either way, didn't come from Spain. Yeah, I, I, I was always like, we're not entirely sure. Like, I, I've, I've seen some things, but yeah, that's, that's, that's the point. So I'm sure this person has long gone on because I didn't give them the response that they wanted. But... Um, gay men are far more likely to um, see a spot and go see a doctor. Yeah. Advanced HIV. Lesions. We're all aware of them. It's one of those things. We Any gay man would be immediately into a doctor. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, we know it didn't come from Spain. So, on behalf of the gay population, you're welcome for being your canary in the coal mine because the fact of the matter is, is that if you think it's only amongst the gay population, you're a fool. Uh, Viva, um, 
I I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the strike team is going going to now basically take out your entire block just to be sure. Um <laughs> Problem is, Ramsey says, plenty of fools and Astral with the tag, and they make better fools all the time. Viva says, again? <sighs> Fucking Germany. So difficult. Uh, <laughs> not binary. Thank you for all the, the comedic fucking gift subs. Oh, uh, what is that? Five, six. Thank you. Thank you again, not binary. Um, <laughs> I don't want to do that one on stream. Oh, I, I, everything in my body says do it, but fucking my brain's like, are you? Re don't do it. Uh. Oh God, did y'all see the Houston Gunback guy? This guy's hilarious. Um, dude went, dude went to the Houston uh, gun buyback, and fucking. Uh, bought a whole bunch of guns <laughs> okay so this guy went to the houston gun buyback and printed out a bunch of fucking guns a 3d printer he, like he produced fucking he cranked out a bunch of fucking uh, a bunch of fucking uh, uh infiltrators i forget which the model is yeah and he saw um he walked up to the i talked to the guy on reddit um okay so a couple of things went around but actually the story and i posted it on our um on our discord the story actually is when he got there they didn't want to give him any money whatsoever and he said uh, they said those aren't real guns and he said uh he's like you said you, nothing on the flyer says that you're not taking 3d printed weapons they're functional weapons like you know i want the 150 dollars per piece the um the quilt oh jesus thank you number um and so they negotiated down to $50 a gun. He got $50 a gun for a box full of 3D printed weapons. And then he took the money and good night, Jacob, and then walked down the fucking row of cars that was there for the buyback and bought their guns. He walked away with a stack of like uh, five uh, five rifles and a pistol. Um, yeah, yeah. Guy, guy, guy went to the Houston gun buyback with a bunch of three D printed guns. He printed for I'm not kidding you. I think he spent maybe fifty dollars on the roll of of uh, PLA. Straight up. When the when the uh, PD apparently wanted to um, not not give him any money uh, for the guns, claiming they weren't real guns, he said, "Fucking, this is the absolute Chad move." He fucking looked at him apparently and said, "Oh, if they're not real guns, then you don't mind if I just give them to everybody in the line, right?" The PD decided that they were willing to part with fifty dollars per unit at that point. He rocked up with a fucking box full. Yeah. Eh, it depends what kind of PLA you're using. You're going to probably want nylon for uh, an infiltrator. So ah, you could probably pop, grab a roll for 48 bucks. 38 to 40. Um. <laughs> All right, Kavaz. Yeah, no, dude, straight up fucking. He made 850 bucks and then bought guns from people in the line for literal pennies on the daughter, dollar in some instances. Yeah. Oh, I know. 
As someone in the 3D printing field, don't do that at home, says Viva. Ah, you know what? Uh, don't do that at home or do, but like, here's your like legal advisory. You're probably going to end up in jail and or the hospital, probably both, frankly. Um, so heads up, but you know, I, I ain't your fucking boss or your, your father. So live your life, but you know, heads up jail plus hospital, hospital, then jail probably. <laughs> so just heads up. Uh, <laughs> Marcus, is that actually satisfying? Kropos, <laughs> you're you're my unofficial boss, Kai. Uh, well, uh, well then, uh, Kropos, as your as your boss, um, I'm going to tell you that officially you're now like your own boss. So part of your job, as I'm telling you, is you're you're now your own boss. Congratulations, you can do away with the the managerial position entirely if you so choose. Um, but you know the the business is yours. Congratulations. Um, so yeah. See how that works? Wow, what am I feeling? A goddamn seizure coming on? <laughs> Marcus. Uh. What? That had to cover my ass, right, Marcus? That had to work. <laughs> Hashtag not a lawyer. Uh, and before we all start smelling toast, they just flip the switch. Uh, yeah, we should mention that, by the way. Um, that, like, you know, like a week ago, um, a Hyundai plant in in Alabama got busted literally having like a couple of dozen children 12 year old okay working in a manufacturing plant that had a, tr uh, a track record in history of safety citations including um maimed and amputated limbs that happened like a week ago you could just fyi that happened a week ago we we There were 12 year olds working in a fucking automobile plant in our country that, I mean, this is, this is some Upton Sinclair levels of shit people. Like I'm, I'm quite like, I'm kind of just stymied at it. This is some, this is some, this is some like literal Upton Sinclair levels of fucking meat factory. Like what, wh what? Uh, Beast, I don't know. Uh, Beast, I don't know. So until further evidence is unearthed, assume they're brown. Safe assumption, they're brown. <laughs> I guess also, God damn it, Kai, that's not how paranoia works, fucker. Oh... Uh... Oh, cool. We're going back to uh, back to the 1800s. Uh, this is, you know, uh, I mean, what was wrong with Victor uh, Victorian era England for children, Wolf? I, I don't know what anybody's talking about. Victorian era England was a great time to be a child, from what I understand. Yeah, that dude, that guy. Fucking novelist. He fucking, you know, he wrote a bunch of books about it. Fucking how... Like, what they have? Houses? Like, a communal living? It seemed very utopian. Yeah. What are the odds they were trafficked? 100% Rex. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> That's just, no casino would take that bet. Not because of the immorality of the bet. They wouldn't take that bet because they're not going to get any money on that bet. There's that, it's a stupid bet. Of course they were. Yeah, 100%. It's like, did you think... <laughs> You want to bet on whether the uh, the ship that sank in the open ocean is wet or not? I mean, yeah, no, it's for sure. Victorian era was a jolly time. Tally ho, empire. Here we go. Um, we should repeal child labor laws because working at an early age can teach some important life le lessons. Fucking Scott. 
<laughs> Not a great time to be a virgin, though. Let's get rid of that fast. Uh, playing with lead toys, painted with lead paint, and sweets, including lead. Okay. <laughs> Non-binary gifted weed, the weed man, which I almost feel like I need to smoke a bowl for, but I'm barely functioning as it is because I fucking bought high top shelf weed like a fucking idiot on sale. It was the sale that got me. Normally, I just buy cheap fucking on sale weed these days. Um, but it was on, it, it was like top shelf on sale. I was like, oh, fuck. And, you know. Oh. Okay. You want to know what level packaging is at? And then there's another plastic tab up here that has like wedged itself. Hang on, hang on. There we go. And it's a glass jar, but it's enameled too. They, they've powder coated the glass jar. Capitalism comes to weed. Uh, Ramsey, it's neat, I guess, but like it's a consumable. I want like a, a fucking, I want a, like a canvas sack and a fucking metal scoop and just to do this and just walk away with bulk weed. I don't need that. It's a consumable product. If I were buying a fucking fancy box with a fancy bottle, that okay, cool. I'm I'm on the market for that. This is exactly what I'm in for. I want weed. Right? Like, I'm, I'm going for a consumable. There's going to be another one of these one day. And, they, you know, I've got glassware that fucking, you know. Yeah. Fuck's sake. Get rid of this shit. Uh, oh, no. No, I didn't, non-binary. I'm just working in order. I'm going to get to it. Um, <laughs> I, I assure you I didn't miss it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's it's I'm I'm going to literally burn the stuff that came in it. Like it's it's an absurd concept. Uh and non-binary gifts <laughs> non-binary brought the action the name because I refused to name fucking by the always meets his word quota, paid by the word Charles Dickens. Yes. Um and fucking uh, Marcus donated a thousand bits uh saying See, this is why I recommend pure sh tier list shit posting. It's not about having standards. Fair enough. Oh. Ah. Uh, wasn't capitalism always in weed, though? No, Wolf. There's actually no. Oh, Jesus. There's a lot of instances, actually, we can show that it, it didn't. Scam train. <laughs> Non-binary gifted a sub scam train trying to get the, the, the hype train closer, but I don't think it works because you've already participated in like trying to get it to go or something i forget how that works i think it has to be a third person i think that's how it works uh it's jet fuel it can melt it's still beams if you uh i can't simply put it in a bag it'd be too dangerous i know right it's fucking um it's pheno exotic jet fuel 2.0 And I gotta tell you, it actually is fucking jet fuel. Jesus Christ, this stuff is ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. I mean, smell that tobacco. That tobacco is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Woo! Jesus Christ. I mean, it's strong enough that it's like potent in your nose. It's fucking ridiculous. Uh... Still no smell of vision guy, I know. Um Oh. 
Uh, 24.91% total cannabinoid. Um, tobacco has cannabinoids, right? Uh, 2.4, uh, 22.49 milligrams per gram of terpenes. Uh, there's 7.98 uh, megs of myrcene, carophyllene, and limonene, uh, 4.94 and 4.02, respectively. THC is 21.57. CBC, uh, CBC is 0.26 percentage. CB, uh, CBGA is 0.15. Yes. So there you go. <laughs> we get full assays. I also get harvest, package, batch, tested, bet, uh, uh, and lot numbers. Yeah. I get full fucking, and I can track using the, the QR code. Uh, I beg you, chat, please. Yeah, let's go. Uh, there it is. There it is. Rex, fu Rex, Rex, fucking non-binary. Rex, Rex got you there. <laughs> I can't thank you, Rex. I don't know what non-binary is after, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, then we can get a train and ignore it and laugh. Fair enough. All right. Uh, small batch heirloom hand raised vintage tobacco. Yes, very much so. Yes, a uh, grown in family <laughs> small bag heirloom uh, uh, Las Vegas tobacco. These guys do they do packaging really well though. Project Project Jet Fuel, inspired by our award winning strain Jet Fuel, Fino Exotic has bred its coveted genetics with other exotic strains to uh, create a one-of-a-kind powerhouse that combines elements of our finest Fino hunts. So these are one of those guys that go out and fucking strain hunt. Okay. Um, duly noted, but Beast, I don't get out there. The gold leaf always did taste funny. Um, duly noted about that non-binary. Um... I'm so upset we missed on uh, decriminalization here. Next time, Sonia, where's here again? I forget. I, I, I forgive me. I'm sorry. Sorry. Beast, chill with that. Chill with that, man. Chill with that. Um, New Zealand. That's right. You're one of our. <laughs> okay. Okay. You're one of the New Zealand contingent. All right. Cool. Um, how do y'all not have the uh, decriminalized weed? Now, question. Um, Sonia, you you didn't decriminalize it, but how is the um, um, supply and demand? How is the supply for the demand? Is there a demand? in New Zealand, Sonia, that you're aware of, and how is the supply for said demand? Is it being met? Um, and then tell me more about how y'all don't have. Uh, <laughs> yes, gold. See, I, I, okay, interesting. Hello, Nunu. How are you today? Hope you're well, or as well as you can be. Um, same as here in the UK that you can grow it and most cops don't give a fuck about it if it's one plant. One plant isn't enough, the wolf. One plant's not enough. It's just not. You need like three to five to get the job done prop. <sighs> Supply here is great, but it's legally, uh, but it is legally whack. Ramsey. Oh, I can't imagine uh, there not being demand as beautiful there. Uh, Aka, I know. Imagine fucking chilling on one of those New Zealand, like, just hillsides. <laughs> Sheep going by and those, that grass, just the green of that grass, right? And you just light up a fatty. The Nordic nations need more weed. They got problems with depressed people there during a bit of weed might help. Actually, you know what? It helped get away from the alcohol too. Um, 
I used to think that it was like, you know, it's kind of like when I was young and dumb, it's kind of a point of pride. But the fact of the matter is, is that like, what's up with the levels of alcoholism going on over there? I, I've like the more of y'all I've, I, I've interacted with, like from sort of like the G Germanic and Nordic areas at this point, I've sort of like gotten the feel for like, yeah, no, there really is a problem going on. Like there's a cultural issue. Like people have alcoholism problems and they can't really like sort it out because the culture is so pro alcohol. Like it, it's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. I've, I, I, I am thinking of specifically one member of this community. Don't anybody name anybody. If you know who I'm talking about that for real has struggled with this in that, in that area. Um, Let's see. UK's third party Lib Dems keep saying about realizing that it's not part of their official party platform. Keith Starmer, leader of the Labor Party, is full da uh, dare program BS. Keith Starmer is the one, Che, that uh, just shit canned the. Um, or no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he shit can the uh, the shadow uh, the, the the shadow minister for what transportation? Um, because he supported the the train workers. Right? Is that Starmer? That fucking is that idiot? Um, uh, Jeremy Corbin went tanky apparently too. Oh, lovely. Uh, Rex, thank you for the gift sub. Um, Aka, congratulations. I mean, it really is that culturally a thing. We have problems without, says Viva. She's, yeah, that's kind of my point. Uh, yeah, we have Viva, we don't have problems with beer. We have problems without. Yeah, that's kind of my point. Um, nice, Wolf. That's hilarious. Alcoholism is pure British culture. <laughs> Every other commercial during games is an alcohol one. Uh, yeah, wait, I have a apothecary privilege. Um... Yeah, because he sort of supported labor rights. Yes, so that that idiot got it. Um. <laughs> Keir Starmer is the closest account non-binary could find. <laughs> non-binary, what are you doing? Thank you kindly, but <laughs> um. Work in a place where every single day all of us would drink six beers after work at least. Our boss would buy us trays and crates for team building. Um, <laughs> lucky I'm not from this loser beer drinking region. We have wine, says Viva. <laughs> uh, if you're sensitive to addiction, you're so fucked. You can't avoid it. This is yeah, I, I, I've, I've really sort of like... It bothers me that you guys don't have any like alternative like drug culture, like weed culture. Like we have, we have things that can sort of detox you and help you like get your buzz on and fucking foot. Like weed is a good stopgap for uh, for addiction. It really is. Like if you're smoking cigarettes, go smoke some fucking weed instead. Fill that habit in there, and then figure it out from there. Once you're over to the the, the nicotine part of it, then you know do what you got to do. <sighs> Ramsey, you guys do, but the rest of the fucking continent doesn't. Jesus Christ. The rest of them, like, Jesus, Sweden is fucking <clears throat> nightmarish about it. Sweden's fucking feelings on cannabis are insane. Like, what, 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 what? Did, did like, a weed plant rape their entire country? Like, what happened? Why are they so aggroed on weed in Sweden? Like, if a cop suspects you've been smoking, they, they legally can, like, draw your blood and test whether... What? That's not a thing that you should... Why? That's, like, some shit even we didn't get up to. Like, what? There's... there's Sweden's out of fucking pocket about the, uh, the weed thing. But apparently they like their meth. From what I understand, Sweden's got a very strong stimulant community. Which is very white of them, if I might say so. If you get arrested for speeding, they can test you for drugs as part of your booking. Lovely. Um. Yeah, Machina. They really are. A bunch of fucking ethno-nationalists, too. Bunch of ethno-nationalists. 
Oh, most of it in Europe does. Meth is a thing. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they like the, they like their stimulants apparently. So, um, what time is it? One fifty-three. Kind of want to. Hmm. Oh God, pound coin and another one. Oh Jesus. A Ramsey just sent me a thing on uh, how alcoholism, alcoholism by country. And <laughs> you're right. Our numbers on alcoholism are much better than most around us. I didn't even know this. Yeah, no, a Ramsey, I, you, you guys are better uh, because of, well, your sort of acceptance and understanding. Uh, of this. Let's see. Top 10 countries with highest rates of alcohol use disorder, alcoholism, females and males. Males is Russia. Females is the US. 10.4%. 10, 10 uh, and then Russia, number two. Uh, and then we don't appear on the male list. We don't even rank for, uh, the US doesn't rank for um, uh, the top 10 countries with the highest rate of alcohol use. We don't, we're not, we're not on that list. Um, Ireland does not rank either. South Korea is number nine on the males and number five on the females. Um, here's the list. Non-binary gifted a fucking sub to alcoholism. God damn it, non. God damn it, non-binary. Oh. Uh. <laughs> we didn't make the cut, Sag. Amorous, I wouldn't have expected you guys to make the cut, frankly. <clears throat> I don't see Germany anywhere. We're fine. <laughs> uh, hung top here are the top ten countries with the highest rates of alcoholism in males: Hungary, Russia, Belarus, Latvia, Slovenia, Slovakia, Poland, Estonia, South Korea, and Lithuania. But uh, let's go by combined numbers. And where's the average? Jesus Christ, the average is way below. All right. Um, here's the average, folks, for global alcohol alcoholism rate. I love that Norway and the Seychelles are kind of like along with each other. I mean, the top three, even four, don't even like th this is these top two are like really out competing. They're really out competing. Hungary fucking rocking it, though. Um, all right, let's pull that. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's comparable to your neighbors. That's the, the thing. And the, uh, a Ramsey sits at, oh my God, uh, Russian Patriot. Oh God damn it. Non-binary. That fucking person might come here. Actually. What is, what is the Russia Patriot fucking account? Oh dear sweet Jesus. Oh. For the alcoholism. Yes, of course. Yeah. As you do. Yeah, yeah, Aka, you can gift subs to anyone. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's totally a thing you can do. 
I bet it's actually a solid recruitment technique. If you fucking give subs to the right creators and get them curious, like, oh, hey, you know, what's going on over here? Who is this person? You know, fall in the graces of good graces of somebody who's got, you know, one of those million viewer stream shit. You have a whole other thing going. Ah, itch, itch. Dude, neuropathy and itching, I'm telling you, it's the, that's the worst part. It's not that neuropathy causes itching, and it does. And the neuropathic itching is a thing. It's its, its own ball of wax. But old itches, the itches that you're like, oh, that really fucking itches, that sort of thing. When you have small fiber neuropathy over your whole body, those fucking things feel like a goddamn needle just somebody fucking stabbed you with. You're just like, yeah, what the fuck? That's, dude, it, itching with small fiber neuropathy. Jesus. The alcoholism account is real, too? Of course it is. Of course it is. Where's the alcoholism? <laughs> Jesus. It's, it's a good fucking account. I mean, you know, look at it. Wait, did that not copy? Ah. There. Diablo. Diablo Immortal. Jesus Christ. Double, no scratch satisfaction, double rip off, damn neuropathy. Uh, yeah. Yes. When something, like, you end up with this like, sort of, like, you know, you want to just claw at yourself sort of itching, but then there's the, like, the, like, stab. And then the, the you want to claw at yourself itching is the neuropathy, neuropathy itself and the damaging of the nerves. The stab is, you like, an old school itch, only now it's, like, amplified. It's ridiculous. Oh, all right. What what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? <laughs> Lauren Bobert, by the way, said if assault weapons are banned in the U.S., that Americans will start eating their dogs. Yes, I'm going to repeat that for you. Lauren Bobert, an actual person who barely earned her geo, uh, G G O D G E D like six months before she ended up in Congress or some shit. Um, Lauren Boebert says that if assault weapons are banned in the U.S., people in America will start eating their dogs because that's what happened in Venezuela. Anyway. Yeah, Gemma, that sucks. <laughs> I'll eat my neighbor's dog before mine. Yeah. Yeah. A Ramsey, right? Like every, I, yeah, I eat, yeah, man, I eat dogs every day. A Ramsey, thank, thank, thank your lucky fucking stars. Every day you wake up, when your eyes open, I want the first thought to be, thank fuck I'm not American. <laughs> iPhone Venezuela. Oh Jesus! You fucking non-binary gifted a tier a tier one sub to menstrual cramps because apparently menstrual cramps has a Twitch account. Not many followers. Menstrual cramps, unfortunately, not very popular. Can't imagine why. Neighbors' dogs have a different flavor to your own, probably. We don't chart in most drugs per, uh, used per capita, but we top the chocolate per capita. So we got that going for us as Amorous. So uh, theobromine is your uh, your drug of choice, right? That's 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 what you guys are saying. It's like we don't try, we don't have a, on the list of uh, drugs, but we uh, have a dopamine uh, antagonist, dopamine receptor antagonist that we really, really like to consume on a regular basis. Oh, really? Mm, sounds like you should probably be on the drug list to me. <laughs> Uh, it's non-binary I mean Jesus Christ I, I can't what were you thinking but either way it was hilarious it was a good gag and thank you <laughs> did something did someone ask something of me no it was astral chocolate a drug have an opinion or 
probably someone like you would be, it contains numerous compounds, which could be described as drugs. Something along those lines. Yeah. All, all Swissy over here was trying, uh, over here was trying to fucking separate themselves out of the list. <laughs> uh, tw- Jesus Christ, I'm Why not both? Uh, one thing I agree with on the pro gun crowd is that state laws don't work. Uh, whatever the astrology are into, what color? Data dude that dabbles in crystal meth or data dude that's into crystals? Uh, into crystals. Into crystals, cat, hundred percent, hundred percent. If you got a data dude that's into crystals or crystal meth, you take the crystals because the crystal meth is gonna be a problem. The crystals are a problem, but it's an easily rainable problem. The crystal meth, on the other hand, is a whole other thing. Yeah, hundred percent, ten times out of ten. Fucking, I, I do not need an active crystal meth user in my life. I've known them. I've been one. Like, you don't, you, that's, a, that's a level of chaos and disorganized just nonsense that is not for anyone over the age of, like, 25, frankly. <laughs> Run your lives. Feel free to experiment. Sow your wild oats. But for the love of God... Don't be the 40-year-old doing doing meth. That's not that's not a thing you need to be. So everything's a poison, everything's a drug. Um <laughs> FIFA, why not both? Oh Jesus. Oh uh, <laughs> you fucking a Ramsey. No. Cat, yes. Hmm, fair enough. Uh, so would meth be safer legalized? Yes, 100%. Yeah, of course. Everything would be safer legalized. Or at least decriminalized. Yeah. But uh, fundamentally, I think that, yeah, you should have like some level of societal control over the supply lines for these things. I, I, I accept that human beings are going to want to do stimulants of a variety of sorts. Like what? what the conversation around crystal meth is the same conversation around coffee. Fucking there's slavery involved in coffee for fuck's sake. Right? Like it, it, human beings are going to consume stimulants of a variety of sorts. They're going to consume psychedelics of a variety of sorts. They're going to assume uh, they're going to consume analgesics, pain, uh, pain numbing compounds of a variety of sorts and a variety of reactions will occur. Good times, bad times, addiction and non-addiction. Um, human beings are going to do this, um, because we are mammals, because we are animals. This is, this is behavior that animals exhibit. Squirrels like to eat fermented fruit and get fucking drunk off of it. They have a good time doing it because they repeat it. They do it more than once. It's, it's, you know, this is just a thing. So we have to accept that it's going to be a thing and we should provide a manner that we can at least make sure that it is open and safe and discussable and medically accessible. Just basically Adderall if it was made properly in a lab and pre-dosed. Yeah. I- I'm fine with it. Um, horses do it. Yeah. No, uh, animals do it. It's just, an, it, it, it's, dude. <laughs> catnip says astral yeah no it, it's why are we building policy social policies that are designed to like entrap people i mean we know the answers but like if you're actually looking to build a better system then you know if you're if you're in the design phase blue skies idea phase you know here's my pitch we know human beings are going to consume a variety of substances that alter their consciousness intentionally um and there's nothing you can do about it um, up to and including drug th- uh, 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 threats of death and torture and harm upon their body. There's nothing you can do to prevent this behavior in human in human beings. It seems like. So why don't you just accept that this this is an innate human uh, human trait, and a segment of the population will be conducting themselves in this manner and make it so it's safe, accessible, um, and reliable. That way, it's less degradatory to society as a whole, given the, the addiction problems that human beings can exhibit just approach it like the medical topic it is 
<laughs> That's it. That's it. Uh, uh, discreet wolf. It's the harming others that like the abstraction. At what point do you draw your line, right? Harming others. If I walk up and you know punch you, clearly wrong, right? But what if I pay someone to punch you? What if I create a system of economics that results in somebody punching you? Right? Like, where, how, 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 where do we draw that harm? Once you abstract and bureaucratize harm, it becomes a whole other topic. <sighs> yeah, I mean, Astro, it's just pathology, right? Is the, when does a behavior become uh, pathologized? when it crosses into the realm of uh, disruption of your life, right? Like that's usually the, the line in the sand for most, you know, therapists and psychologists alike is that when the behavior becomes a detriment, then it's potentially a pathology. Just keep it light. <laughs> Don't let it ruin your life and you should be fine. <laughs> Jesus Christ, not my hair. Uh, <clears throat> pay someone to rape you and evade saw to be lost. Ah, Rex. Rex rolling out that galaxy brain again. Yeah, ca oh yeah. No, caffeine's a drug. Theobromine is a drug. Um, like, yeah, kid, coffee. Caffeine. F uh, coffee, chocolate. All these things are, like, you know, the theobromine in um, in uh, in chocolate is a dopamine receptor antagonist for fuck's sake. It's really, it's, it's, you're getting your hit. You're getting your fucking hit. Yo, sugar is a huge fucking, sugar outcompetes cocaine for neurological activity. Cocaine, yes, sugar outcompetes cocaine, HCL, for neuroactivity. Like, this is confirmed via fMRI studies even. Like, sugar's insane. The fact that we have... It's fucking crystal meth. You don't understand that. It's cocaine. It's not even crystal meth. It's cocaine. Sugar is cocaine. You take this raw fucking plant product and you just take this active compound and you fucking refine the shit out of it till the point where it's pure fucking white. Sh sugar is cocaine. It's the same thing. We just, you know, accept it. What's your opinion on the official announcement of the U.S. entering a recession? What's your outlook on current fiscal policy going forward? Uh, okay, so opinion of the official announcement of the U.S. entering a recession. Honestly, um, <laughs> this is recession number, I forget for me, three, five, something like that. Either way, I'm almost 40. Um, so it's I've seen a few recessions in my life at this point. Honestly, meh, business as usual as far as I'm concerned. Uh, what's the outlook of the current fiscal policy going forward? Uh, I'm an anarchist. I have already, uh, I already have a bevy of criticisms of what I would describe as neoliberal hypercapitalism or late stage capitalism or whatever stage of Marxian analysis you'd like to apply to this if you're coming in from it the other direction. Um, the fact of the matter is that even a Smithian level analysis of our version of capitalism is not doing great. So not great. My, my outlook is for the fiscal policy is not great. It's a fucking neoliberal policy that's designed to enrich the, uh, the elite and the oligarchs even more so. It's not going to stimulate any areas of the economic growth that we need to stimulate. I mean, the silicon, conduct, uh, the silicon chipset uh, manufacturing uh, bill, good move. Good move. That's a decent move for once. Um, it would net boom, move need to make, be made 10 years ago, by the way, just FYI. Um, but you know, it's a, it's a good move, but like, yeah, no, we're not doing any of the things that we need to do to prepare ourselves for the next 25 years of shit that's going to be hurled our way. Um, I, luckily we are energy independent. No thanks to the previous administration or this administration, frankly. Um, that was a long time in the works. Um, so we are energy independent. We do have our primary five um, economic um, 
allies on uh, on treaty lock at this point we're um shifting uh some of the major manufacturing or not major manufacturing but the minor manufacturing the small end consumer good uh cheap range uh, cheap range manufacturing that's already been shifted out of china to southeast asia and it's going to be moved over to the subcontinent in india for a lot of things and also a lot of the manufacturing sectors being refocused to india as well as well as mexico because we're looking to create a sort of a supercontinent situation going on um, so fiscal policy for the U.S. grand scheme, if you're rich, it, it's it's looking good. If you're not rich, you're probably fucked. Um, so there you go. <sighs> Sugar is a hell of a drug. It is. Oh, uh, what was the? Sugar <laughs> Ramsey. Sugar fucks me up for real. Um. The pay somebody to eat me out. You say to avoid the charges, huh? Uh, and so, okay. So, I mean, let's see. Who was that? Uh, hello, Nova. Uh, mustard homie. Any care to respond? Care to interact? Internet interface? You asked me a question. I think I did a pretty comprehensive rundown for you. Uh, honestly, <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, if you're rich, it's looking good. If not, you're fucked. So nothing changed. Amorous, has anything ever changed? It's always been an oligarchy. Minor exceptions here and there, of course, throughout. But the fact of the matter is, it's, it's always been an oligarchy. When has it not been the rich and powerful? Right? When has it not been the rich and powerful? Rich. Oh. Uh. Oh. All right. Yay. Oh. Mm. Oh. Hang on. Oh. Let's get the shoulders moving. Get the arms moving. Get loosened up, everyone. Everyone, get the blood flowing. Stand up if you're at your desk. Stand up. Get yourself moving. This is you. Get the blood flowing. Give it a hop. Get your chest out, shoulders back, stomach in. Caboose, fuck you. I'm sick. <laughs> Uh, a Ramsey, fuck's sake, Kai. You're right, but, ugh. Aka, okay, Richard, calm down. <laughs> Channeling Richard. Oh. Two people, two people. <laughs> uh, well, I'm getting 1984 vibe from that. <laughs> we need a super camp stream one of these days. Uh... Here's what we're gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a few stretches here. I'm gonna loosen and limber. Then I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna do some I'm gonna do some pull-ups. Probably nothing like you know 15, maybe 25 if I'm feeling ambitious, but I don't think so. I had a massage tonight, so that's what's gonna happen. All right now, you're feel free to follow along if you want. Loosen up. It's good. Get the blood flowing. I know we're on a political channel, but, you know, even the activists need to limber up from time to time. I can't actually maintain this, cat. I grew up sweating to the oldies. Nice, cranks. Should we move it to the pools, hot tubs, and beaches? <laughs> Hit me up when I can manage one pull up, says Aka. Oh. Arguably more uh, more than anyone else, as a matter of fact. Uh, spent years. Oh, okay. All right, hold on. See if I can do this. We just need the outfit. Amorous. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on.
For those of you that don't know the outfit, here's the outfit. And now that we have the blood flowing, we're gonna take a hit from this glass tobacco water pipe. Cat, stretch you fuckers. Oh, God, I'm so jealous right now. Honestly, I've already, like, I did arms today, and I've already done a few sets of those. And I had a massage today as well, so I shouldn't be doing that. I can feel it in my shoulders. But I can bang out about 25 of those, no problem. I can bang out 50 push-ups, no problem. And my rep count on my uh, bicep curls, I have set at 75. <laughs> Like, it's ridiculous. But exercise is a great way to get cannabis to flush. So if you want to come down from weed pretty quickly, go work out. It's difficult to motivate, but if you can do it, it'll bring you down pretty quickly. The Oma Gels, too. How do you practice uh, a pull-up? You don't start with a pull-up. That's you don't. Wolf, you start simple. Honestly, simple. Then you get rings or bands and you attach them to a door in the door frame and you hang from them and you do the opposite of that. And then you steepen your angle for the push and steepen your angle for the pull, right? And then you steepen it and steepen it and steepen it. <laughs> and then eventually what you end up is that. And if you want, if you're, um, when you finally work up to that, if you're still not ready for that, you can get elastic bands, like the stretchy therapeutic bands, and put them, like get a, a, a long string, uh, like get a roll of it, and do your own run, and you can stand on it and get a, um, get uh, get the, the, the spring action and take some of the effort off of your arms, even. Hashtag not advice. Oh, yeah, and hangs. <laughs> hangs help. Um, but also, uh, anything that strengthens the forearm. Um, bicep curls, uh, stuff like that, yeah. I had a friend who believed that until one day he went to the gym. And his workout was intense enough to let the acid turn his fat into the bloodstream. Keep in mind, this was an early morning pre-workout. <sighs> a pre-work workout. Oof. No grip strength. Rip. Yeah, you got to work on the grip strength. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just don't slip and coot a ball slap here. Slap yourself.
<clears throat> I'm trying to actually find out. Um, this is the, the solubility of LSD. Apparently, uh, practically any liquid will dissolve it, but it looks to be polar solutions. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, from what I was seeing, Astral, m most liquids seem to be a viable solvent. I'm lucky if I can manage a minute without shaking like a leaf. Aka, uh, four minutes of planks. You just, um, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, four minutes of planks. Um, I've never had a four minute plank in my life, I don't think. Um, yeah, Astral, that feels like the, uh, the, 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 the flashback mythos. Um, yeah, I, I've had a, 245 something like that recently when I was pushing a plank but um yeah uh, alright <sighs> kind of feel like closing it out doing that um Oh god, I kind of feel like closing this out with the fucking cat game. I still want to finish this cat game. <laughs> I just haven't. Uh. Ugh. Oh, look at that. Yeah, and you can always ask in meatheads. Guys, if you have questions, fucking check the Meatheads channel. There's always somebody in there who's got you. No. I don't... It's highly, it seems highly refined, but... I've, no. Do something else than teacups, too. Um, shaking is good. means you're doing something right. Yeah, it means you're exercising. If you're shaking, usually it means you're exercising. Hard. Uh, wait, hang on. Let me check something really quickly, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did y'all see Kansas is keeping abor uh, keeping uh, uh, Proche's abortion protections in place? Um, abortion rights pass uh, in Kansas. Kansas put it to a vote. They're all, uh, and conservatives were it, it, it got shot down yeah yeah Kansas Kansas upheld it <clears throat> um <clears throat> 68 point1 to 38 point2 so it was a two to one two to one ratio yeah <laughs> Cupcakes, states rights, baby. Um, yeah, no, it was it was a closeout. Yeah, it was it was good enough. It was well good enough for every fucker that said it. There were two that were ready to shut him up. So I'll take that. <clears throat> I used to go to a gym with a buddy, uh, but he's been having a bad time with his chronic intestine inflammation. Oh, it's such a pain. I feel for him, man. I'm awful at motivating myself to go uh, uh, go on. Oh, a Ramsey. That's a you a Ramsey. You already know what you need to do, and you're not doing it. So you don't need me to tell you what you fucking need to do. You know what you need to do. You need to get a new gym buddy. You need to get a fill in. You need to get a fucking substitute gym buddy. It's just the way it is. You gotta fucking keep on that, my man.
See? <clears throat> if you're not capable of self-motivating, then you need to find a new person to motivate you. I've swallowed the calisthenics pill, like left squats and push-ups are like <laughs> how long is the MFA? Um fuck you. <laughs> How's your squat form, cat? I'd love to observe it. Cause this is what that's one thing I can say. Like I've I've actually like I've gotten really, really high end like advice on my squat form over the years. Like people with PhDs for real. Like that's one of the areas that I can like I can legitimately say my squat form is 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 apparently where it should be for my body form <laughs> i got good squat form um but it i didn't have it initially trust me it was drilled into me for by a variety of people but yeah i'd love to see you squat cat um you expect us to have more than one friend kai <laughs> my bad my bad i know i know still trash but i fixed the more egregious mistakes nice no knee pain now progress yeah yeah it's all in the hips man it's all in the hips it's about like uh hinging the hips basically um you kind of you hinge the hips pr on on the mechanic down so the legs sort of sweep more yeah it's it's once you get the muscle control over the the thing but it takes a while to build muscle control you know that like it's yeah, it's all in the hips Guy squat form is immaculate it's good it's good yeah. Uh, fun thing I learned the other day. A town in France is still paying a debt to a town in Spain for some murders that occurred in 1373. <sighs> that is kind of hilarious, Trey. On many levels. Um, <laughs> Hills to the sky. Western spy. Uh... Yep, basically I had to work on the hip mobility to actually do the proper hip hinge. My issue now is ankle mobility. Yep, that'll get you. Um. <laughs> yeah, Caboose. Yeah, Caboose has to self-motivate. Caboose got to get in there on his own time. But amazingly so, Caboose has got a hell of a gym. Uh, you have the sort of face that looks the same from elementary school to age 50. What's that about? I don't know. It is, there's a group of that, right? Like, there's a group of that. Um, and, yeah, I've, I've been in that group for a while. It's weird. It is weird. that there's, there's, like, a group of humans, and it happens in every culture that you're just like, there's something about it. It's a little little timeless. Little You always retain something mildly youthful about your appearance. Don't know. It's weird, though. I agree. Um, twink jeans. <laughs> He's a taka. He's a twunk now. <laughs> it's actually not too hard to get in there if I'm already out and about after work. Yeah, no, no, no caboose. You've got a great deal. It's just you got to get yourself in it. It's the adrenochrome. Um, Josh, we can't let them know. I'll meet. I'll see you at the next baby neck breaking sucking marrow sucking ceremony though. Oh, God, that photo's good. Um, <clears throat> Hold on. <gasps> what the fuck? It's a mobile game. What the fuck? What the f- Holy shit! Okay, I'm gonna show you a mobile game ad. This is- this is the level we're at. Holy shit. It's a fucking card game. It's a fucking card game, man. <laughs> Dude. 
gamers the most oppressed fucking minority? Uh What if domestic abuse, but solitaire? Russian bro who make these ones are billionaires. I know, right? Watch the Mafia go mobile game ads. Oh, Jesus. How bad is it? It might not even be that. For some reason, mobile game ads uh, aren't actually, sh uh, actually showing, uh, aren't showing actual gameplay. They show something else and it ends up being a totally different game. Great. It's a fucking who knows what it is then. It's a total bait and switch, possibly. Uh, me and my buddy had a weird way of going about motivation. We completely ran on the catharsis of complaining. Most people like the encouraging you could do this type of come on type of stuff, but I want that this sucks. Let's just do it. So finding a new buddy has been difficult because of that. Interesting, Ramsey. Um, I could probably work with that. I could work with that. I could work with that. Yeah, that's a vibe I could get down with. If we just have stuff goals for ourselves, that's that's how I would I'd approach that. I'd be like, dude, we can complain all we want, but we need to like set goals for ourselves. And so like, if we're gonna do like three fucking three three route three bouldering routes, you know, fucking, and then we're gonna upgrade, move the V up a bit, and you know that sort of thing. Like, yeah. I fucking dude, this sucks. Two more. This fucking sucks. Holy shit! I can't believe we we're gonna fucking do this. This is stupid. Oh my god, why are we? Fu oh my god, I'm the dumbest fucking human alive. One more. One more. Oh my god, it's just I'm gonna. This is I'm gonna regret this. Holy shit! How am I this bad? Why do I suck at this? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I can get behind that. It's easy. Yeah, it's a shame. It's, I'm sorry. Like, I bet a lot of Americans could get behind that motivational style real easily. I bet that's a European thing. <laughs> I bet a, Americans could get that vibe real easy. Real easy. I, I, I'm betting most Americans could be like, yeah, we can complain our way through something. That's, that's, we're good at that. <laughs> that's, that's very, that's a very American trait to complain your way through something. <laughs> That British stiff upper lip shit stayed in Britain, it seems like. Um, yeah, we complained and hit goals. It was great. Yeah. that's. I'm sorry you're having trouble finding someone, man. That's a shame. Why is it not? All right. That window. Cool. Oh, hey, nice. Uh, Prussian gym buddy, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I mean, the stream has uh, been enough to make sure I go today. Uh, but yeah, long term, I need to find someone. Well, Ramsey, find yourself an American <laughs> in town. <laughs> Even the most negative of us tend to be described as like golden retrievers to, to by Europeans. We're 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 a smiley happy bunch. Like it's like we you could spot an American amongst Europeans. Not a bad shout. Yeah, find yourself an American. I <laughs> we can fucking we can get down with that vibe. We can. It's fucking easy for us. Just complain loud enough until someone comes up to you and says, yeah, this shit sucks. <laughs> it's so quintessentially American. It is. Yeah, this shit sucks, man. <laughs> Do Americans tell Europeans to smile? Oh, God. Uh, pff, I hope not, but they probably have. Need to move to Europe and get left alone. Depends on the American, though. Yeah, I mean, it does. But... Yeah, the loud and angry versions. Luckily, there's less of those that travel astral because they tend not to like foreign places. <laughs> or is it goddamn McDonald's? <laughs> um, but
but yeah, you should, there's less. They, there's a good filter on them usually, at least. They, they self filter, but yeah, a few of them escape from time to time. No, you shouldn't publicize anything like that, Beast. You don't talk about it. You just do it. Uh, find a Jordy. We'll help you with everything. <laughs> uh, loud and angry like isolationism and hate foreigners. So I don't see those, says Ramsey. Oh, it's good how that works, isn't it? Um, oh, well, this is important. You're going to need to see this. Here you go. I told you it was important and that you need to see it. <laughs> to die for Kitty. Um, <laughs> Kitty Khan. <laughs> yep. Um, we get the obnoxious and self absorbed ones. Um, yeah, dude, Astral, as somebody who's, you know, like number one tourist destination sort of shit. Um, yeah, the Chinese national tourists get rough. It's. There's no, like, even in just greater society, there's no avoiding it. Like, it's, yeah, everybody walks away with a few stories. It's like, god damn, really? Yeah. Your buddy comes to fucking smoke session after work. There's like six, seven of you fucking hanging out. And just want, you know, casino workers, man. Fucking bartenders and drivers and concierge. Adam fucking works high-end concierge now. Fucking, you know, yeah. Yeah, and everybody gathers, and there's there's some um, patterns. There's some patterns, and it's rough. It's like Jesus Christ, really? Mm -hmm. Just right in the corner. Mm -hmm. And see if you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about when I said right in the corner, right? Like it's it's yeah. No, the rap is yeah. It's like really yeah. Oh geez, okay. <laughs> Uh, the, the buffet? Yeah, the buffet. Wow. Like, completely? Completely. Jeez. I don't even need to, like, go... You know what I'm talking about. If you've been in the service industry, if you're in a vacation spot, you know what I'm talking about. It just is what it is. So... Um, the loud, obnoxious tourist is no longer the American. Um, in fact, some of the most hated tourists are usually <coughs> the British and the Germans. FYI, for those in chat, generally speaking, the British and the German tourists are the loud, drunken, obnoxious, territorial visitors. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's very commonplace. G having a, a fist fight from one or both of those discretionary groups uh, happen over a towel placed on a chair. <clears throat> um, yes, even Vegas is aware of the towel on the chair incidents that happen between the British and British and German, and German, and British, and German tourists. B Viva. Well, if my towel is placed on the chair, it's my chair. Yeah. <laughs> the Brits know we're terrible tourists. The only thing I can think of for Germans is the sun loungers. I mean, they get drunk too. <laughs> yeah, yep, Brits hate towels. <laughs> Undiluted Viking. Like, it uh, British tourists that visit here are usually pretty nice. Yeah, Caboose, you get the good ones. Like, out, out there, they're in there for the nature and shit like that. Vegas, we get Vegas, right? We get people, right? Uh, um, just imagine a bro, wherever you're from, 
wherever you're from, just imagine your version of a bro, right? We're going to do a Vegas trip, right? We get those guys. That's the version of you we see, FYI, in Vegas. Like, think of your bro that's going on a Vegas trip. Whatever that looks like in your culture and society, that's the version of it that we get to see in Vegas. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> we get to see an interesting side of most of, most of you guys. Uh, a towel. What about the digging a bunker on the beach, German? Luckily, we have plenty of vertical mine shafts in this desert. If they want to dig a hole, they're free to dig a hole. We don't care. Uh, no, the ger drunk German tourists in particular. Yeah. Uh, drunk German locals tend to be okay, but the, the tourist ones are obnoxious. I've only had one encounter with a German tourist, and the worst thing he did was ask a lot of questions about the area and get really confused why, despite being a local, I didn't know every single minute detail about the area. Dude, Caboose, that's just Germans. That's just Germans, man. You got to meet a German. You got to meet a German. Dude, their specificity is everything. It's, dude, you got to meet a German. Yeah, they're crazy, right? But you're like, why don't you know this? Why would I know this? <laughs> We're so much more laid back. It's so it's so ridiculous. Uh, I agree with the Germans on the towel thing, though. My towel, my spot. See? Oh, a Ramsey, a Ramsey, though, a Ramsey official Dutch position. You're 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 representative of the entirety of the people of of Dutchlandia, right? Do you go to war over the towel, though? That's the question, because the British and the Germans have decided they will go to war over the towel, that, that the British and German tourists will start a fist fight, right? Are you willing to go to war over the towel? Because <laughs> they fucking do. Uh, the Dutch are backup Germans anyway. <laughs> I'd go to war if it's wet. Um... Yeah, yeah, Beast, that, that makes sense. Like, see, those people, those types of people, right, Beast, self-filter. You don't see them. You don't see them. Uh, I thought my towel, uh, my spot was universal. Crimson, are you willing to start a fist fight over it is the question. Are you willing to start a war? No, we complain to management and make their life as much as hell as possible and be petty and passive-aggressive. See? See, now that is the reasoned, cultured response you would expect fr uh, from somebody on the continent. <laughs> Passive aggressivity. Yeah, dude, tourists suck. Tourists suck. Be a traveler. Never be a tourist. Learn to travel. Don't ever be a tourist. Dude, it, it, it's, all the problems that the man had, Anthony Bourdain taught me how to be a, oh, be a traveler and not a tourist. It, it, that, that is the lesson Anthony Bourdain had for Americans, right? For Americans. It was a very uniquely American lesson. Stop being tourist. Tourists suck. Learn how to travel. When you learn how to travel, I do too, Aka. You're welcomed. You're, you're, you're welcome there. It's, yeah. Being, dude, tourists suck. Plain and simple. <laughs> Better to wait until the next day when their skin burns, <laughs> burnt lobster red, then fight. Red wine ter terrorist with the fucking stratagem at hand. <clears throat> Maybe. Depends on how badly it pisses me off, this crimson. Mm, interesting. Love to get to know you more. That's interesting. Uh, the only thing I know about Dutch tourists is that they used to travel with the full house. <laughs> oh... Uh, a lot of people don't know. Hitler threw a towel on British soil when visiting, and that's why Britain joined World War II. True facts. That's true facts. Any, I mean, that's like history, like world history 101. Like, seriously. Like, you learn that in high school over here. And if we're learning it in high school, then, I mean, fuck. Jay's British.
Yeah. The tourists want to eat the, the Hilton restaurant fucking breakfast, continental breakfast because it's free. And they don't want to have to go out to find a, a, a breakfast place. Right? They don't, they're not looking for anything of the culture from the culture. They want points of interest that they can take photos of and then move on to the next thing. They don't want anything of depth. They don't want to know anything about the people generally. They don't want, if they want to know something about the people, it'll be some weird slave plantation sort of shit where people are demonstrating how things worked in the olden times. And it's weird. And you're just like, why are we doing this? We have cell phones. You know, you know, the people of the area are just like, you know, we have cell phones and shit in our pockets, right? This is fucking make believe, right? It's, it's always some weird ass shit like that. Or so basically it's just a, a Disneyland like experience of some sort. You know, it's cultivated. It's moderated. It's, you know, it, it honestly tourism sucks. But if you learn to travel, you can travel anywhere. And being a traveler is welcome as long as you're not what we know as the travelers in Europe. And then you'll be genocided and chased all along the continent and generally reviled and hated by most people in a way that is weirdly usually reserved for an othering that doesn't strangely look like you. Anyway, um, <laughs> Kai, I'm an average Dutch height, so relatively tall guy that hits the gym quite a bit. Current uh, circumstances excluded. I've never really had a problem getting my spot back. <laughs> yeah, this isn't Ramsey. Fair enough for Ramsey. Um, but I, I bet you wouldn't do that in America, though. <laughs> I bet you'd be too worried about guns. <laughs> That's the thing. The Europeans come over here. They, they're too afraid to fight. Y'all's fucking fight willingness to fight goes out the door when you hit America. You're like, you know, you'll fight each other, but you generally don't fight Americans. <laughs> That's why I say we see them fight each other. It's not us. We're f the fucking tourists who are fighting the Brits and the Germans doing that towel shit. It's not Americans that get in fights with. <laughs> <laughs> fucking all of you think we're carrying a fucking like full full automatic machine gun at all times <laughs> so none of you swing <laughs> you guys come over here and you're like they're all carrying bazookas don't anybody piss them off <laughs> we're fucking nuts and, and the truth of the matter is, is we all are and you really should act that way <laughs> uh uh, <laughs> Ramsey, are you fucking, are you kidding me? Fight an American? I don't want to die. <laughs> Europe, we're ra we're not racist. Romani exists. Europeans starting up the ovens. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Because the Amherst, because you people have guns. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Russian tourists we get around here are interesting. Hourly, they're scary looking, very serious face, but very determined looking, but super polite and weirdly apologetic. Interesting, Caboose. Um, yeah, we get, we get the very loud and aggressive Russians. Um, they will fight. The Russian tourists will fight. They will fight. Oh, the Chinese ones will too. Women. Chinese women, the female tourists. Do the, the Chinese national tourists that come here, the women, do they, they will fucking throw down. Like, just in an instant. Like, they get scrappy over a lot of shit. Yeah. Like that was that was the wake up call for me. It was like, wow, is that who's really like fucking like aggressive with it? Yeah, like they will fucking throw down in an instant. It's like, ah, oh. <laughs> beast. Oh yeah, no joke. Aka, Chinese tourists are forced to be reckoned with. Chinese women will beat you. Russian tourists will disappear you. <laughs> uh, good old Dutch courage. Yep. <clears throat> Uh, we have weird issues with Chinese tourists using our bathrooms to bathe, says Caboose. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a thing too. Yeah, it's a thing too. Um, what ads, Wolf? Are you getting mid-roll ads? Are you? Oh, did you have to refresh your page or something? Because if you refresh your page or close the app, you could end up with new ads. <clears throat> it happens. Yeah, uh, Wolf. I mean, I'm in no way, shape, or form am I allowed to tell, inform you of specific ways to bypass that. But, you know, speaking generally about technology, there's usually a way to bypass most things. 
just a general statement about things. <clears throat> um, <laughs> a Ramsey, a Ramsey. Um, it's like um, it's like a Jack Russell Terrier, right? Small dog, but oh, bred for hunting. <laughs> you know, it's it's it's, it's it's they mean claws and teeth, man, claws and teeth for real. Yeah. Uh, the hair pulling, too. Holy shit. Specifically at a buffet. That one was, yeah, witnessed. That was, dude, yeah, fucking fuck on the ground. It's like, Jesus Christ. Ramsey, you, <laughs> you give him a kick and they go flying. You can't reach my hair. Uh... Yeah, it just... It's like, wow. Yeah, there's it's 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 interesting to see the like under like the sort of drunken wild side of all the various cultures of the globe. Frankly, it gives us a very it gives Vegas residents a very interesting insight into like human psychology. Like when you get to see everybody get up to their wild drunken shenanigans that they have been fantasizing about. Frankly, you know, yeah. It's an interesting, um, pe just peek through the window of the human consciousness. It's like, mm -hmm. certain groups behave certain ways. Certain groups, like, it's, it's always, it's always a polar thing. It's always a, a, a yin and a yang. It's always a, a, you know, a positive and a negative. It seems to balance that way. The ones that are, like, outwardly drunken and wild tend to be, like, when they, like, get here like super reserved and like into the th into vegas and like they they really want to like see some shows and do some shit um and they get drunk along the way and have a good time right but they really get into it and the ones that are like super reserved like come from super reserved cultures come here and just lose their shit they just lose their shit they they, they let go like it's we're a pressure release valve we know that like that's we were aware of that it's not a it's not a thing that slipped by we're, we're we're capitalizing upon it it's pretty much in the program but like yeah it's it's it is it works that way it's basic human psychology the, the ones that come here from like really reserved sort of like restrictive conservative cultures go batshit crazy here and the ones who are just sort of already free to go fucking buck wild they tend to actually really get into vegas they tend to be chill when they're not too hammered um, or at the pool. Europeans in the pool, man. I don't know what it is, but just get them somewhere else. But I've had a lot of fun with you guys <clears throat> over here. Europeans are always like fun visitors. Usually you like to go camping. You like outdoor stuff. You like, you, you know, you like to go see a painting, you, you know, you're all across the board. They do everything that'll get them arrested when they step off the flight back home. No, they really do red wine. Yeah, it's it's it, yeah, it's what Vegas is. You know, you can't complain about it. it it's just <clears throat> I missed the memo on Europeans and pools, dude. Papa John, I they get they get ag I don't know. Like apparently, like I think okay. So Papa John, here's my theory. I think Europeans sort of like crave the old style conquest shit of being able to like plant your flag in a new in a quote unquote new land and like claim some territory, even though some folks already were there and basically set it up for you. Um, and so they've sublimated this desire internal desire into uh, holidays on which they go abroad and then they uh, put their towel on chairs that are put there by someone else. Um, and then claim their territory and it, it 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 gives them like a little burst of what it used to mean to be European. They like they get a little like nostalgic, I think, for like the olden olden times. Like, ah yes. This is my land. I, I, I plant that flag and exploit my territory as I want. My towel, my spot. <laughs> Oh. Oh, oh this is yeah, this is a pizza. A pizza. A pizza. This is like right in the morning, Papa John. <laughs> 
Papa, Papa, this is right in the morning. They basically unlocked these doors. They unlocked these doors basically to the pool. Because if you don't do this to these idiots, if you don't lock the pool off, they'll be out here all night camping all night. Yeah, Viva, it's like 5 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, it's like 5 a.m. <laughs> what, what is going on? <laughs> Astral, and they landed the queue. <laughs> a Ramsey literally saying, oh yeah, you have to set an alarm if you want to spot when there's Germans and Dutchies. Caboose, they're like locusts. <laughs> <laughs> it takes minutes it takes minutes it takes minutes and it's just done oh uh, they just carve it up old school european style it's fucking brilliant and, and it's just over with it's hotel coral playa uh in ibiza um, full of Germans. We were next door at the Imperial, mostly English. We had a lion. They didn't. <laughs> Every morning at 8 a.m., they open the doors and they all come out. Two minutes later, it's over. <laughs> Viva, this is our pool now. Yep. It's literally old school, old style Imperial conquest. <laughs> It's sublimated through tourist uh, pool adjacent lounge, cheap plastic lounge chair claiming. It's the most goofy shit. I love it. I love it. That's what the scramble for Africa looked like. They drew the continent on the ground with chalk and gave everyone a couple of towels. Didn't you know, says a Ramsey? I mean, a Ramsey, it kind of really is what they did i mean when you consider how slapdash some of that was i mean is it really that you know it's that's a fair analogy actually yeah we drew some lines with chalk and here's a couple of towels you're good to go right um crimson i've never seen a towel claiming to that extent crimson now you know what we were talking about you were like oh you know you put a towel no you don't understand you will never get a chair they will claim them all <laughs> No, you, it, it's, it's the craziest shit, and they will go to war over those towels, over those chairs. It's, it's. I didn't realize towel claiming was such a foreign concept to the rest of the world. A Ramsey, not to the extent that some of y'all get up to it. Like we understand that. Like I go to the pool and I put my towel down, and this is my chair. Not at eight a.m. when the pool opens. I'm going to go down and put a towel on a chair that I specifically reserve for the rest of the day. This is here by my chair. Get the fuck out of my way, right? Americans are way more blasé and laissez-faire about it. Like when we go to the pool, I'm sure like there will be chairs open. Like there's you know not everybody's gonna go to the pool at the same time. Like it says you take your towel with you and you know you go about it. And when you're there at the pool, you know if you you put your towel on your chair and that's your chair for when the time you're there but the the the, the insane degree that some of y'all europeans get up to that the, the towel chair selection is very much reminiscent of imperial conquest it's kind of crazy to watch it in action yeah um beast will move that towel <laughs> oh two group oh fuck it really all right fine you suck you suck youtube you suck just know you suck you will always suck there's never been a moment in your existence you didn't suck just know that youtube i want you to know that deep in your heart uh this what do you think this is over <laughs> we will move that towel, or Ramsey. I will look at you angrily and with intimidation in my eyes. There we go. Came back with backup. Came back with backup. Well, they really did get into it for a while. Yeah. 
This is this is more what I yeah. This is what we're familiar with. We're familiar with this. Just open brawling in the streets. Yeah. Yeah, we know this. We know this tourist. <laughs> he's out, out. Like, he's get him a fucking CAT scan out. Holy shit. That dude, dude, do not move him. Do not move him. Do not move him. What are you doing? Do not move him. Jesus Christ. Oh, someone landed a proper KO punch. Yeah, dude, Astro, he was out, and his head hit the fucking concrete. Back of the head hit the concrete, too. He was out. Dude, that was that was get a CAT scan territory for sure. Yeah, that was, he was, he was, he was out for seconds. He was, like, properly out for seconds, just immobilized in an awkward position, too. It's going to want to get that left arm checked, I think, too, probably. Looks like it was hyperextended. Hopefully just a concussion. Yeah, I mean, you know, just. <laughs> Astral, what number concussion do you think that probably is for that young gentleman? <laughs> See, that's when you say things like just a concussion, <laughs> given, given the, you know, the sort of ideology of the patient here. <laughs> it's probably number three or five. Oh. <laughs> uh, Oh, just a concussion is a rugby thing to say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's bad as in least worst. <laughs> I could have been the one that pushed him over the edge, you know. Oh, that was the. There's the dem there's the dementia. Right. Jesus Christ. You do stuff like this if you have proper health insurance. Yeah, um, health insurance and lots of liquor. Yeah. If you guys smoked more weed, you'd probably do this less, though. Just saying. I mean, if Americans had health insurance and no guns and smoked as much weed as we do, probably look uh, a lot differently, actually. Well, concussion and sunburn by the time he gets to a hospital. Oh, God. And I'm concerned about the back of his head and, you know, just general whiplash as he fucking, you know, came back and then forward as he fell and then slamming into that fucking pavement. This sort of, yeah, like just any of the C vertebrae are going to... Mm. I, I Yeah, I'd want I'd full examination. Dude, I'd have him in there for full fucking workup. Just in case. That is, that's a rough fall to take. Dude, that kills people. That kills people. That kind of fall kills people. You get fucking like that and you fall with your head on concrete. That for, yeah, that kills people. Um, I tell him my spot still goes if I have a blunt, says a Ramsey. He's fine. He wasn't smarter before, so no loss. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's fucking, he got up. But, you know, yeah. Boom. Didn't tuck his head at all. I mean, <laughs> he wasn't conscious when he was falling, Grimson. <laughs> it's, I was fucking, he was out. Yeah, he was un unconscious for that fall, which is bad. Yeah, that's bad. Oh, well. Um, all right. Where is that? This is a public service amount. Unsa announcement. Skull trauma is bad. <laughs> also drink more water. This has been a public service announcement. Consciousness is underrated. Uh, don't you just mean overrated? There we go. 
Um, the guy who rolled was a weird thing to see. I, you know, we're going to read up to public. Most of you know who public is. If you don't know who public is, well, you're going to find out who public is. I think most of you know who public is. Um, yeah, I'm going to get some food. I got some rice prepared, luckily, so my carbs are taken care of. I'm going to get some food in me, and I don't want to have to fucking rush it for once. Yeah, I'm fine. Hey, you never know, bees. We'll see, we'll see if the fucking if it takes hold. On <laughs> binary, the last sub to menstrual cramps. Still unread. I just marked it. Jeez, that was non binary. Jesus, fuck me. That was a thing. Uh, I'm gonna throw away someone towels. Is Bob John. <laughs> Bye, Ramsey. Oh, I was. It's always fun seeing you, man. Keep keep on keeping on over there. Keep doing the thing. <laughs> Ramsey, you want to go? You want to go, son? You want to go?